Greetings and welcome back, everyone. This is the Angry Chicken. I'm Garrett. Here is always with Jocelyn, and we are joined by a very special guest this week. One of the most requested guests, Regis Kilbin. No, it's impossible. Hello, everybody. Thank you. <laughs> we've, we've got a Discord where people can like be like, "Hey, I'd like this. You should get this person." You have come up multiple times in there. I don't believe it. Impossible. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad my alternate accounts are working. You never see the thing. <laughs> Yeah, man. Plus, like, I'm like, I'm a legit a fan. I uh, I really like your content, so I'm I'm stoked you've been able you were able to uh, to come on the show. So 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 thank you. Yeah, thank you. It's an honor to be here. Appreciate it. Yeah, we got quite a lot to talk about as as has been the case basically since BlizzCon. Like, like I would just like, how are you feeling right now, Regis? Because um, I mean, we've been doing this well for 343 weeks uh, and some change. <laughs> um, We've been covering Hearthstone for a while, and it feels like there is just more than there has ever been, and we're we're like actually having to make decisions about what we talk about in our content. <laughs> Believe me, I feel it. Same thing with videos. It's like sometimes we have periods where it's like, man, what in the world am I going to make a video on? Like, what's the topic? What game is it? And right now, I have a backlog of like ten videos I was supposed to do, but other things happened. Announcements came out. Insane battle grade. But, Battlegrounds games happened, and uh, yeah, this wave has, has been never ending for a month. So it's been good. Don't get me wrong; like it's a it's a privilege to have awesome stuff to do all the time. But it has been something else. Yeah, for sure. We've been uh, we've had a couple two hour marathon episodes for a few weeks in a row. Um, but you know, we'll see. We'll see how this goes. A lot of neutrals today. Neutrals tend to go pretty quick. When we get to uh, when we get to the card <laughs> yeah, discussion, yeah, it's just like arena, arena, me, me, arena, me, and me, me, and go. <laughs> some of the neutrals today, my yeah, goodness. Some of them are ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, hopefully it doesn't go too long. I'm definitely not a marathoner. I don't, I don't <laughs> run marathons much in my life, so <laughs> this will be a first for me. <laughs> I do talk about cards a lot, though, so I may challenge some of those notions for quick neutral cards, but we'll see. I'm it, excited. Well, then it's I guess it's a marathon bill for you because it's a marathon about talking cards. Yeah. So. Perfect. <laughs> oh, well, awesome. Well, before we get into it, I want to thank our uh, patrons supporting us over at patreon.com slash TAC. Some of our more recent patrons, uh, we want to give you some shout outs. So thank you to Kodiak, spelled with a zero. I see you in there. Uh, keeping Leet Speak alive. Thank you, Kodiak. Uh, David Pedden and Christopher Sevastio. Thank you so much for supporting the podcast. If you want to go check it out, listeners at home, patreon.com slash TAC is the place to go and support this here podcast. We got some perks over there for you, like access to the Discord server, plus some other good stuff. But Regis, uh, you know, in case, I find this unlikely, but in case some of our <laughs> listeners are unfamiliar with you, you know, we like to, whenever it's we have a guest unlikely. on the show <laughs> for the first time, we like to, uh, we like to kind of get to know you. Like, and so like, we will start with the, the quintessential uh, content creator question of, where the, where the heck did you get the name Regis Kilbin? Was that like the name of your <laughs> druid in PvP Arena and uh, Burning uh, Crusader close, or World of Warcraft? Actually, very close. You almost nailed it. So, yes, it does come from World of Warcraft. Way oh. back in the day in vanilla. And uh, I had a series of characters, as many people do. So I had a warrior named Regis Kilbin. Because warriors, were you know, they kill things. And I had a <laughs> priest named Regis Heelbin because priests heal things. And I had a, a rogue named Regis Steelbin because rogues steal things. <laughs> so I just went with kind of the first one, the most default Super sounding, deep. <laughs> which was Regis Kilbin. And it's stuck. I I don't know. I wasn't planning for it to be a thing. But uh, sure enough, here we are, and it's a thing. So Regis Kilbin. I'm forever attached to Regis Philbin, beloved host of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. And just <laughs> constantly hope I don't get sued. But that's a conversation for another day. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, well, I think you're doing the name proud. I don't think yeah, you have anything to worry hopefully, about. <laughs> hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> He seems like a nice guy, but you never know. <laughs> Joss, did you, you and I, you know, we go by our real names on, uh, on these things that we like to call the interwebs. And, uh, did you ever try to make a handle work? Did you ever do a handle? Well, dude, when we first started the show, I was GIS gamer. I was that for the first like two years of the show. Well, if, if you work. were, I never, I definitely didn't <laughs> respect that. Cause I called you Jocelyn <laughs> since episode one. Oh yeah, totally. Like, and like, I've never had a, I guess like a nickname, like something that people actually like call me IRL other than just Joss. But 
Yeah. No, GIS Gamer is the only other handle I've ever had. And then very, very quickly, people either didn't know how to say it, didn't know what it was, or a combination of both. So I was like, you know what? I'll just I'll just go with Joss. That's easy. <laughs> Except now people call me Joyce and Jock and <laughs> every other iteration. Well, yeah, uh, so. I believe Trickster called so you Joss a couple of times last week. Oh, Joss, yeah. Oh, Canadian Jose is real. To correct him, yeah. <laughs> Uh, Joe, would you be okay with Joe? I feel like that's what's next. Oh yeah, Joe. Actually, I was I was Joe for a really long time in elementary yeah. school. Uh, <laughs> hey, my name's sorry. hard to spell. I get it. <laughs> I don't think it is, but also my last name is Weinzerl, so you know. <laughs> <laughs> I that saw that. Face, <laughs> my name's a secret. <laughs> it's out there if you know where to find it, but it's uh, really public. Wait, it's not Regis? <laughs> <laughs> it's not. I kind of wish it was. My wife calls me Regis half the time now, so Regis is becoming my reality. But wow, it's it's starting to merge. It's starting to merge. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. Um, I mean, like, also, you know, kind of historically speaking, in terms of of you as a creator, like, did you just dive right into Hearthstone, like, right from the get go? Did you have a background in card games, or were you like me, just a Blizzard fan, and was like, yeah, sure, I'll give it a try? Really, just a Blizzard guy, I guess. Uh, never played like Magic the Gathering. I mean, I had occasionally dabbled and bought some cards here and there and just looked at them. I kind of just like the artwork <laughs> and the, the systems of card games, but never really played. I never like had friends that were into it. So really, Hearthstone was my big first foray into actual card games. I started in season two of Hearthstone, so I'm missing one card back. It's like the mm. worst feeling in the world. Do it. So and, uh I just Go ahead. I just joined that club of the worst feeling in the world because I just missed my first card oh, back. Oh yeah. yeah, battlegrounds took over. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep. I well, and sure evolved didn't leave. I would I would like to add <laughs> oh, evolved yes. didn't leave into that into that quantifier. But yeah, <laughs> that you had a double combination there, the double punch there. Gotcha. Yeah, um, I, I managed to get it this month, but still missing that one. And uh, yeah, I just was enjoying playing a lot. I was also playing Here's the Storm a lot, so. I was like, man, I'm spending a lot of time, but not really doing anything productive. So I decided to start making content, and like four years later, here we are. I, I finally achieved my dream goal: the Angry Chicken Podcast. <laughs> it all led to here. <laughs> That's awesome. I didn't know you played Heroes. That's rad. I love Heroes of the Storm. Yeah, yeah. I, I used to write uh, Heroes articles for uh, Tempo Storm back when Tempo Storm was like the go-to. Here's the Storm team. So I loved Heroes. It was I, actually, if you go back to my very early YouTube uh, videos. Half of them are like heroes from the first like six months or something. Oh my god, like I probably Hearthstone. read them and just didn't put two and two together. Yeah, that's that's how you can find my real name if you're looking for it. By the way, oh, we got it. We got the cheat code <laughs> to find Regis's real name. Everybody. Yeah, shoot. No, that was a good time though. It's uh, it's been a fun journey for sure. So Hearthstone <laughs> captured me more than I ever expected. I just love like the characters and the lore, and then of course the gameplay hooks you instantly. So it was a match made in heaven, really. So, so what are your your thoughts so far? Because obviously uh, Battlegrounds has been taking up a lot of people's time, but we do have a new expansion on the horizon literally next week. So are you stoked for Descent of Dragons? Just because obviously we can't cover all the cards in one show. So overall thoughts on the expansion? Yeah, I mean, I'm always excited for new expansions. I'll be honest, like Battlegrounds has stolen a little <laughs> bit of that luster. Like there's a part of it that's like, man, I know when I'm playing new decks that I'm still going to kind of have an itch to play Battlegrounds. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm wondering how it'll feel in the moment. But of course, I'm still excited, like all kinds of crazy new stuff. The power level seems to be off the charts. So hopefully and presumably we'll have some meta defining new decks, which are always fun to try to discover and learn and that kind of first few days experience is really enjoyable. So yeah, of course I, I have some hesitations about the power level too, to be fair. I'm, I'm worried what it could do to the rest of the game, but I'm trying to put trust in the dev team and seeing how things unfold before, you know, making any, any crazy claims <laughs> about what it's going to do. Uh, so well, they we'll do see. seem, they seem a little bit more agile this year. Like Garrett was talking about off the top of the show, they seem a little more agile. So I'm sure that if there is, and I now have faith in the team that if there is anything wrong with the set in particular, that they will go in and fix it one way or the other. (laughs) Yeah, for sure. I mean, we've seen so many more just things happen Mm -hmm. and I guess minus evolve, which they've kind of come down severally from the rest of the community on. Most of us think evolve should leave. They kind of, stuck to their guns on Evolve. Minus that experience, I think the last six months to a year, they have really been putting out multiple patches, patches super fast. So and just introducing new content mid-expansion, all of this stuff is, you're right, a, a good sign, I think. So even if things do 
go crazy and the power level spikes too hard. I mean, I'm hopeful that they'll they'll make some quick changes. I think even last year we saw Rossicon's Rumble come out and then we saw a balance patch before Christmas, right? Before the holidays. Yeah, it was within a week or 10 days, I think. Yeah, yeah. so I wonder if we'll see that same thing reflected this time as well. <laughs> Who yeah. knows? Rossicon was it really, like, my memory is it was a pretty big non-starter when it landed, though. And it and the patch helped. I, I Like, we were... Mm -hmm. It was a couple episodes ago, Joss, right? We got an email. Folks were like, hey, where would you place each standard year? And while we were in the subject, we kind of came to the realization that we think Rossicon's Rumble was maybe the closest to TGT in terms of its, like, non-effect on the yeah. meta. <laughs> yeah, but, I've, I've run the same numbers, same numbers, like, using HS Replay, like, just going and seeing, like, cards by percentage played, and Rossicon has, like... I don't know what it was. It was like five or six cards that were like above 5% or something. Whereas most expansions Oof. had like 15, 20, 30. It's, it's very, very dire for Rossicon's Rumble. It was which it's, it's sad because from a flavor standpoint, I loved Rossicon's. I was mm. so excited. I was like, oh my God, this is going to be great. I love trolls. I love this theme. And it just fell so flat. I loved the idea. I was a little bit on the fence. <laughs> Oh yeah, the Loa. Yeah, the Loa were great. Yeah, Loa is great. Yeah, like all these cool. In theory. Awesome <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, only like, only a couple have really gotten there. Hyreek, my boy, maybe finally have a <laughs> chance with, with uh, Bander Smosh now to actually get played in a real Hearthstone game. We'll I, see. I wonder if that's playing a role in the power level of what we're seeing coming out of Descent of Dragons because like the end, the last expansion of a year to be kind of fair in terms of its card design is 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 not not that typical with Hearthstone. So. I wonder, uh, this, yeah. I wonder if this is a little bit of a, all right, all right, we're, we're going to, we're just going to blow it up at the end of 2019. <laughs> well, it is true that they work roughly about a year ahead and sometimes even more than that on expansion. So perhaps some of the feedback coming out of Rossicons where people are like, really, that's it <laughs> has driven the Descent of Dragons uh, power level as they, as they designed right after that reaction to Rossicons. Maybe. Maybe we saw it swing pretty hard. Maybe too far the pendulum went uh, <laughs> on the power level side, but we'll see. Uh, I'm down for crazy powerful things, especially yeah. when they're dragons. Like, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> yeah, thematically, this expansion is a home run. Like, it's so cool mm -hmm. for all these characters, big time lore characters to show up. We all get a chance to feel like Brian Kipler. <laughs> <laughs> so we all dream. get a chance to get really hyped about dragons. Uh, well, uh, before we kind of move into news and whatnot, I'm kind of curious to, to talk about Battlegrounds a little bit outside of the realm of news because we do have some Battlegrounds news. Um, but I think it was last week the devs talked about how they are definitely working on uh, inviting seven players into a, a game of Battlegrounds, which J Jocelyn, you immediately were just like, well, community tournaments could happen. It was, yeah, like, literally we're totally anyone could run a, now. <laughs> yeah, could run a a battleground tournament at that point. And then we, we obviously had the battlegrounds brawl. So I was kind of, we're, we're kind of curious what your thoughts are on the idea of battlegrounds as a tournament and also just what you thought of the brawl in general. Yeah. So lots to unpack there as far as <laughs> queuing up with friends. I mean, that's just an obviously wonderful idea. It's good for casuals. Just get a group of even just five or six people together. If they can fill the rest of the lobby, just like getting to beat up on your friends and stuff in battlegrounds with giant minions. Like that's going to be great for stories and, and fireside gatherings and all this sort of stuff. But I do think it offers both like community level tournaments. You're right. I'll also want to run tournaments with subs and so on, but even higher level esports as well, I think becomes a possibility with battlegrounds. I will say that one challenge for battlegrounds and competitive viability is that I think you have to get a lot of matches in to truly determine the most skillful player because there is certainly skill as we've seen with the MMR uh, on the rankings. Uh, good players rise to the top, but it takes a lot of games sometimes to wash out the RNG of both the kind of um, tavern phase of Battlegrounds. Sometimes you don't get minions you need, but also the battle phases do have some RNG inherent to them. So it takes, you know, 5, 10, 15 games or, you know, matches of Battlegrounds, I think, to really start to see some separation among, you know, a great player from a good player, et cetera. So I think from, a, a, you know, running a tournament, putting on an esports event, there's a bit of a challenge there because it's a big time commitment for just eight players. Like, you can run dual lobbies, but there's some logistics to probably sort out there that I mm -hmm. haven't really solved. Thankfully, that's not my job. Yeah. I'd love to see it. Someone else will figure out how to make it work. The important <laughs> exactly. thing is soon we can put eight people in one lobby from your friends list. <laughs> yeah. So I, I'm up for all of it. And, and by the way, the Battlegrounds Brawl, which I was somehow lucky enough to get invited to, was extremely fun. Like, 
Uh, we did play seven matches, which I think was really starting to border right on the right spot for enough to see who really rose to the top. So that was good. I was worried it was going to be like three matches, which might have given me more of a chance to win, frankly. But <laughs> it, uh, <laughs> it was still just enough, and it, it felt really good. So that was very hopeful. And, of course, they took care of us. And it was a, a great event and, and a lot of fun just to meet some people I hadn't met before in the Hearthstone scene. I still definitely feel like uh, a bit of an underdog and outsider. So when I get to hang out with, like, Tice and Kibler and Firebat and Disguised Toast and all these like people that I idolized for three or four years. I, it's awfully cool experience. I, I'm enjoying it for anybody else who can't because uh, I'm definitely nerding out a little bit in those uh, in those moments. We know those feels where we may or may not be having them right now. So <laughs> no, no way. <laughs> This is just oh, the humble. episode where we, we, we try and make Regis blush with our, our yeah. fandom of this content. That's, that's the working, goal of this working. episode of The Angry Chicken. Well, thank you guys. I appreciate that. So anyway, yeah, Battlegrounds, all of it is exciting to me at this point. I'm enjoying myself so much. The content, frankly, is blowing up for me. People are re receiving it really well. I think the community has come back in droves to play it. From what I understand, it is absolutely blasted through blizzards like expectations and forecasting which i think is pretty obvious if you just look at like twitch sitting mm -hmm. Hearthstone back in the top like four or five games on twitch is kind of remarkable so bring it all i just want to see everything battlegrounds basically that's certainly how i feel uh judging by the lack of card back from last month <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> yeah oh it's all i freaking want to play right now um although yeah. definitely can, just we, hit can, we, uh, can we end the podcast and queue up battlegrounds together you know <laughs> I, I should make an overlay where i can just show all three of us playing while we try to do a part that oh i mean the end of the year is coming in listeners at home you want to see a screw around for a christmas episode right can we uh, yeah. we should attempt to record an entire episode of the angry chicken while simultaneously playing Playing Battlegrounds. Be, yes. be great for the listeners and not the viewers. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, there are minions smashing into each other. I can't see their stats. We'll, uh, their we'll, we'll each that sounds hit, cool. We'll each hit some old school radio filters on our voices and do like a bad sports cast play by play of exactly what's happening. And the cave hydra. <laughs> the cave hydra got three buffs. <laughs> there it goes. <laughs> Uh, that terrible. sounds good. Yeah, uh, wonderful. I'll, I'll watch. I'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> well, before we get to today's news, we have a sponsor to thank for today, and it's uh, it's Harry's Razors. They are back sponsoring this episode of the Angry Chicken. It, my it, my lord, it's December. Um, I have a lot of <laughs> I have a lot of holiday shopping still to do. Um, but uh, luckily, every year, I'm not joking. This, this is not just because it's an ad read. Like I do give out Harry's gift boxes. Like every freaking year because their gift boxes are really freaking nice. Like we're nerds. We They're love, so fancy. We, we literally go out of our way to go to YouTube and watch unboxings. And like this is this is legitimately a solid unboxing. Their, their, their holiday gift sets are really nicely put together. And uh, I, the, Harry's is our run, like our longest running sponsor. And I believe it's been over two years and I've been a convert ever since. And oh. I realize I have a beard, but <laughs> uh, that beard grows a lot further down my neck than I want it to. So I still have a reason for, for razors and uh, I'm a big fan of my Harry's blades. Um, they're great. Good, good, smooth shave. They're very affordable. Um, and as a special offer for fans of tack, you can uh, go to Harry's right now and get $5 off any shave set. This includes those limited edition holiday sets that I just mentioned. All you have to do is go to harrys.com slash TAC. You're also going to get free shipping. These sets come with a weighted ergonomic handle that you can uh, engrave. There's an option to engrave. And it's like old school arcade rules. I believe it's three number, three digits oh. or characters. <laughs> so, you know, you can do their actual initials or uh, something slightly cheekier. <laughs> you know I'm going with the cheeky option. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> yep. yep. You also get a five blade razor cartridges, uh, foaming shave gel for a rich lather, travel cover blade so you can take it with you. And uh, package in a handsome holiday gift box. Free shipping ends on December 16th. So go now over to harrys.com slash TAC. Again, that's harrys.com slash TAC. We thank them for their support. And now let's get into this week's Hearthstone News. Good news, everyone. <laughs> Evolution is coming to an end in standard. It's here. The day has come. Uh, and it's coming on Thursday, December 5th. The wild cards. Well, it, it comes in two days. But yes. Yeah. It's <laughs> the day is coming in two days. There's 
I'm failing to make a sentence there. Thursday, they're going away. The wild cards are leaving. We finally no longer have to deal with Evolve and our standard set, uh, which is is good. Um, I we've we've would have spent a lot of episodes of this show complaining about the fact that Evolve is still in the game, but we had battlegrounds to talk about and new cards to talk about. But yeah, I haven't been enjoying it. <laughs> So I'm glad it's it's going bye bye. You and all of the comments on Reddit apparently, like every single one is like good riddance, about time, not soon enough, bye. <laughs> I, I really would like to defend it in saying that I like this event outside of Evolve. Like everything else I thought was really rad. Like if we could have tr- like traded Evolve for Lotheb, I would have just mm. been pleased as punch. I would have been so happy. Yeah, I think it was I think it was a good idea. I think it just maybe potentially stuck around a little bit too long. Like I can see them wanting to really impact the meta and give people time to figure things out. But at the same time, two months was probably a little bit long because I felt like it really impacted the meta of the expansion. It's like we weren't actually in the expansion meta. We were in this like evolutions end meta. In and it just I don't know. It could have been out faster i think <laughs> yeah i feel that i mean i i'm generally known as a pretty positive hearthstone player i guess people say <laughs> that i don't feel like i am all the time but people get that vibe at least and uh, i i notably got tilted on stream numerous times with evolve prior to battlegrounds because <laughs> i haven't played <laughs> standard since and uh that was a little bit out of character for me so i, I was like man there may really be a problem because i'm kind of not having fun and i pretty much always have fun playing hearthstone and i was like i don't want to be like the barometer for <laughs> a card should be well, yeah, about, like i'm not if the even stick, regis can't have fun then maybe we've made a mistake <laughs> i think someone actually made a reddit post of a clip on twitch and said like exactly that like like it was me getting tilted they were like you made regis mad <laughs> like, i was like man all right i don't know if i like being used as that <laughs> as that level of like mouthpiece for the game but okay well sure. since i like, agree I, I with kind of the... agree with the anti-evolve sentiment, I'm glad that someone made that clip, and for that yeah. I thank them. <laughs> but yeah, like again, I you know, we've mentioned this a few times uh, over the the past you know month or two while this has been going on is that like I, I, I'm a really big fan of these events and I want them to do these kind of mid expansion events like we also saw with uh, the Boomsday event where they buffed mm-hmm. all the Boomsday cards like that was rad and and there was such a big surprise this year so like. Yeah, we're all very much kind of focused on our ire for Evolve, but I think it's also important to kind of remember like all of the other cool cards that came in, all of the other archetypes we got to play around with. Um, and so like, I, I just hope, because like the vibe I'm getting, even though it's not what they said, I think the reason they didn't make a change is because it was here for a limited time. They saw it going out, like they didn't straight up say that, but come on, like it was it was a little, it, I really think it got out of hand and I have to imagine that they knew that. So I think, I think the apprehension was because of it being a limited time event. So I would just say in the future, do this, but just be willing to maybe just remove a card if it's problematic or try replacing it with a different card from the, from what's, you know, hanging out over in wild. Yeah. It's weird too, because with Luna's pocket galaxy in the same sort of mid expansion event, they buffed it and then they reverted the buff. It was no problem. And they did it fairly quickly as well. So it did feel a little more kind of sticking to your guns or stubborn than, than what we'd seen in the past. I, I almost wonder if there wasn't something to do with like patch cycles and the timing was just like really awkward or hard, which is not a great well, excuse, think- by the way. Like the, <laughs> they just be able to patch <laughs> the game faster in those scenarios. But I, I do wonder if there was some sort of technical or, or logistical issue that they were kind of having to talk around a little bit and, you know, double down on their premise just because they maybe couldn't do it. I, I don't really know. I don't want to defend them without more knowledge but uh, well i think uh, they actually did say something along those lines in the pc gamer article that basically mm. because of all the platforms they're on even if they did make a decision it would take two to three weeks to actually roll it out and they're like well that's pretty much half the event time so <laughs> right. it was the kind of thing where like they might have been able to change it but you know by the time they did then it wouldn't really have had as big of an impact and really what they need to do is make better choices from the get-go for these kind of short events instead of trying to change things and i think i i also agree with them on not just like because a lot of people were calling for like changing the card or like nerfing the card it's like well if it's only problematic in one mode and it's leaving that mode in a short period of time probably don't change it like it, it the wild meta isn't exactly the same as the standard meta right like evolve isn't problematic over in wild or isn't as problematic over in wild 
So maybe don't touch the card because that's where it always lives. You know, just maybe don't choose that card in to put into standard where it becomes a problem. So yeah, I get I, not nerfing it. Like, I'm glad they didn't touch it. I totally agree with that. And for the record, I was playing uh, Evolve Shaman and Wild before the event. I, I finished, like, top 100 leaderboard in Wild, I guess maybe a month or two before the event came out. And I was like, man, Desert Hair Evolve is so good. I was like, whoever figured this out <laughs> is a genius. And I talked about it for a month how much I loved Desert Hair Evolve because it was kind of a little bit of a meta breaker in wild. In wild, and, yeah. <laughs> and, yeah, and I was just climbing like crazy. And then sure enough, it gets dropped in a standard and it's one of the most hated combos in history. So well, like, there's I less saw tools the writing to... on the wall, but who knew? Yeah. Yeah, there's less tools to deal with stuff in standard, right? Like wild, you have access to so much and in standard, it's just like the most recent couple of years. So I can see how something would be problematic in standard, but not maybe as bad over in wild. So, right. right. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone uh, blame Regis and uh, send your, your blame <laughs> to. I didn't, Regis make the deck. I didn't make the deck. No, I just, maybe I brought some, <laughs> some, some spotlight. I just brought it. all the attention to yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. It's uh, always me. It's always my fault. <laughs> But still, uh, overall, like I thought this was like, God, when they announced this, I was just, I was losing my mind. I thought this was so mm -hmm. freaking cool. Um, and I still think almost every card that they added was like a really good decision. I think Evolve was just a little over the edge. Personal salts about like infinite Nazos aside. <laughs> you know, that just is a personal issue I ran into pretty early on in the event, but. Yeah, um, but let's switch gears to Battlegrounds because uh, in, in addition to the wild cards leaving this Thursday, we're getting a new uh, Battlegrounds patch. And uh, not everything has been like hardcore revealed, but like Mike Denae revealed in Sliss's stream that Rafam is the new hero, which is not what, he, not what Rafam does. I'm assuming yeah, some just, sort of we scheme. We got a name. <laughs> He's definitely scheming. But yeah, schemer. Yeah. Mike Denae has been leaking like little tidbits mm -hmm. everywhere, just popping in his streams and revealing everything. I wanted to piece it together for a video, but it's like too much work. You got to track <laughs> down 30 different streams. And yeah. It's like, we need a mic tracker. To yeah. Bundle this all together. <laughs> like, it's like a, yeah, a forget blue trackers. Yeah. <laughs> just, just specifically <laughs> Denae. It's like Denae a Hearthstone, <laughs> Hearthstone tease tooth fairy that just shows up in streams sometimes. Yeah, or exactly. Reddit for that matter. He never came to my stream. I'm actually a little insulted. Oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> like, come on, Mike. We, we talk all the time. I, w I went to a, like a play test for battlegrounds in September and I got to, I got to pick his brain. So I can't complain too much. <laughs> this really was, fun. I finally broke my streak of every BlizzCon. I just end up in line for food with Mike, the Nate either in front or behind me. And that's when we catch up. This BlizzCon broke that streak. He he's always buying bacon somewhere. He's he loves bacon. That's all he talks about. Actually, the like code name for Battlegrounds before they named it was Bacon. And the, <laughs> this is at the playtest I played. And like you know, there's player tips that pop up on the loading screen. Yeah, they'll say things like whatever you sell your menu, you get a gold or whatever. Now, but it used to give you tips for like cooking bacon. It would be like put your bacon <laughs> in the oven for 450 degrees for a crisp. <laughs> delicious taste and it'd be like dry your bacon with a paper towel before placing it in the oven <laughs> so every time you queued up you'd learn a little more about bacon it's hey cool. hey team five i'll figure out gold on my own <laughs> team five are, are you are you planning a patch and around or on april 1st because i've got an idea <laughs> I've got an idea for a little fun. Every card is bacon. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just bacon tips. Yeah. <laughs> How hard is it to get some voice lines in that just tell you how to cook bacon when you play cards? Yeah. That'd be wonderful. Bob just only says bacon related <sighs> to this. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So um, it hasn't been confirmed that King Begurgle or Floating Watcher is coming in, but considering both of those cards have been confirmed as on the horizon for the mode, I mean, our, our barometer is pointing towards very likely, right? I think they said that it was uh, coming in early December. So I feel like December oh, 5th right. is they did pretty mention, early December. <laughs> they have been referring to updates by months. You're right. And I think they were, yeah, both of these were mentioned. This is my ability to put clues together, guys. Mm. <laughs> I'm next level thinking here. <laughs> December 5th, early December. Next episode, Jocelyn will be wearing a Sherlock hat. Yep. <laughs> I really want one of those. 
Sorry, what? <laughs> I have a uh, I have a League of Explorers hat. I guess if we want to do that, like <gasps> oh, that is wonderful. I have <laughs> a, uh, a, a Boomsday Boom's- hat. I have a Boomsday lab coat, but it is not in reach, sadly. Uh, okay. Yeah. All yeah. Right. All right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, Floating Watcher. I mean, we know for sure what Floating Watcher does, and we're pretty sure it's coming. So, I guess we could talk about that. Although. I haven't really pieced together what I think about the card yet for Battlegrounds. Do you guys have any <laughs> thoughts? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think I, I think demons probably need a bump more than Murlocs at the moment. I mean, we know what King Bergurgle does too. We talked about uh, him last week. Yeah, he's the battle cry and death rattle. Buff your dudes. Yeah, buff your Murlocs. Yeah, um, but yeah, floating watcher for for audio listeners if you don't remember because it's been a long time since you have probably even thought about this card and if you pl- played outside of GVG and standard. You may have never even seen it, but it was uh, whenever your hero takes damage on your turn game, plus two, plus two. So there's plenty of ways to do that, especially if you're going demons and battlegrounds. So that makes a lot of sense. And it, this isn't adding to the damage you're taking. People doing demon strats in battlegrounds are already playing this risk reward setup of diving real low in their health and hoping they find the Malganus. So mm-hmm. this is just more value for taking the damage that isn't going to kill you faster. So in yeah, that- this goes really well with the little one, one dude wrath weaver. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> I just call it the one, one grower. I can never remember yeah. its name because I'm like, you, you weren't in the game. I don't remember your name. The one, one grower. That used to be a nickname I had, but <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm going to be so mature. Watch how mature I'm going to be. I'm not going to laugh at this. Didn't work. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Felt like that was just PG enough. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> You're enough, maybe. Perfectly on brand for the yeah. angry chicken. Perfectly. Yeah, on yeah, brand. Okay, I was. <laughs> it was too good to pass up. Frankly, I was like, yeah. I'll risk it. <laughs> um, so back to floating watcher though. I think yeah. the problem for this card is that demons have a weakness, which is that they're not good against poison or divine shield. Like they just yeah. get big bodies, but they can't trade at all. They just die. And I don't think floating watcher changes that at all. He still just another. Potentially big statted minion that scales pretty well, but doesn't have that late game prowess, which is why I found way more success lately with demons on sort of a token soul juggler build as opposed to a grower, wrath weaver, <laughs> or floating watcher build, which can can dominate the mid game, I think. Uh, which but is as soon good as poison comes in, <laughs> top fours. But yeah, exactly. Yeah. As soon as you move to those late game phases where divine shield and poison start to stabilize, then you just kind of lose. And uh, that's it's fine if you just go for top fours. That's okay. So, I mean, it may help kind of bolster that mid-game plan, just playing for your outs if you get offered a ton of demons. And that's fine. Like, that's probably a good addition. Yeah. Yeah, it's an interesting way to think about it. Because, uh, yeah, it feels like they, they need in tried poisonous or divine shield one or the other because mech without an amalgam only has access to the divine shield, right? That if there's no way to get a poisonous mech outside of right. amalgam. So, right. yeah, um, that, that is kind of a glaring omission from, from demons. Or, you know, yeah, well, alternatively, they could offer some other kind of thing. I mean, we don't have that many keywords in, in Hearthstone to pull from, but Soul Juggler kind of does that right. Like, it gives you extra damage via some other mechanism, and it, it can snipe off targets, kill that mama bear early, whatever it is. So if you get creative, there might be other ways to solve the demon problem. Uh, I, I don't know how you do it. I'm not that smart. But a demon <laughs> that generates the 1-1 one, one amalgam token that Curator starts with. Okay, sure. Yeah, yeah. That's probably not creative enough. I, I bet they would be like, no, we don't want to just go down that road of just ensuring <laughs> they get an amalgam. That's kind of... Yeah, I mean, I guess maybe more death rattles and demons could be one way to do it, I guess. Like turning those... Maybe like when a minion dies, it splits its stats into three equal parts or something, right? So those stats have the opportunity to take multiple hits instead of just dying Mm. once the poisonous. That kind of thing could help transfer stats into more value. Best I could come up with, at least. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, but the uh, the Murloc I'm, I'm excited for, but I'm also on the fence about buffing murlocs i feel like we the, the community's figured murlocs out like yeah murlocs popped up big lately like they're becoming a really viable mid-game strat because it's just so easy to give them all poisonous and that makes mm-hmm. them a threat in the mid game and then if you can play toward that towards that mega sword late and it's just like you win against almost everything i think there can be divine shield mech builds that beat divine shield 
Murloc builds because of the death rattles and, and divine shield pops and stuff that are possible off uh, microbots. But uh, I don't think Murlocs need a buff either. I think they did initially probably when King Burgle was was planned. And mm-hmm. But uh, the change to Cold Lights here and Primal Fin Lookout put Murlocs in a good spot already. So I'm a little nervous. We'll see. The cool thing about Burgle is that He's a battle cry cycler that you can leave on board and still get a ton of value from. Usually if you finish a turn on a battle cry cycle, like Defender of Argus, you're just stuck with a 2-3, and you maybe use it as a divine shield popper, but it's mostly not that much value. But now if you finish a turn on Begurgle and he's buffed your Murlocs up, he also gets to to implement a buff in combat, so he's kind of like a two-for-one. And that's not something we've seen with battle cry cycle minions much so far, so I'm... Excited but nervous. Yeah. <laughs> so if uh, if Rafan's coming in, someone's going out because Danae did. I forget where this was confirmed, but I know I saw it. It was um, Danae confirmed that they are still doing the whole removing heroes when new ones come in. Um, what hero is leaving, and why is it definitely Draxus? <laughs> <laughs> well, I would hate to see a demon hero leave with floating watcher coming in. That would be mm. sad, honestly. Um, Jaraxxus is really tough because he's just so narrow in his build. Like, you feel so compelled to go demons. They're already a weak strat. And then being really uh, inflexible in Battlegrounds is also a problem because you need to be flexible and play towards the tavern, just what you're offered and what lines up. So, yeah, I think Jaraxxus could probably use a rework if you're not giving demons a rework. So I agree he would be a fine one to remove. Now, that said, I don't know about you guys, but... I wish they wouldn't remove heroes. I wish we had a pool that was bigger than 24 so that in a given game, you weren't always going to see the best hero. Like right now, you pretty much always see AFK or Curator or Brand. Rat King. Yeah, Rat King, Yogg even. Whoever mm-hmm. sees them is going to pick them because they know they're the best. So they're in every single lobby or 99% of lobbies. If you had 40 heroes in the pool, sometimes nobody would get offered Rat King. Nobody would get AFK. Mm-hmm. And I think that would just make the game feel more fresh. So if they have a pool of, of, you know, 30 heroes already, I would personally keep it at 30. What do you guys think about that? Well, I am uh, always unlucky. So that terrifies me because I would probably get on the opposite end of that. And my three <laughs> offerings would consistently be trash because there'd be so many heroes uh, that I would just get Fair the bad enough. ones. That's a good counterpoint. Yeah, um, that's a good counterpoint, but, actually. No, like, that's an interesting way to look at it. Um, you, you were certainly the, the, the half, half full to my half empty. Um, <laughs> on brand for me. That makes sense. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I also wouldn't, like, they haven't said why they remove certain heroes versus others, but if secretly, and they're not telling us they're removing the ones with the highest win rates, then I'm all for it. Like, I just think that's kind of rad, also, uh, if, if that's kind of the case. Um, I don't sure. Yeah, I guess I guess my scenario, I would want a pretty ideal balance, right? Which may not be that achievable. So in the meantime, this is probably a good solution. Yeah, because yeah, because it's a certain way. I don't know. I think there's there's upsides to both. I I think just having a just an, an eventually achieving a rather large amount of hero diversity would just kind of sort itself out. I think. Um, I think it would probably need to be even above maybe even above forty at some point, but. On the other hand, like removing heroes, uh, I mean, we've already seen them do it, and that changed things pretty quickly because of how popular Maleficent and Mukla were. Not talking about Lich Baziok was literally just bad to play hero, but <laughs> um, I thought it was pretty pretty interesting either way. So I'm, I guess I'm just on board with whatever gives me the most variance in the heroes that I see because, yeah, I played a game right before the show, and I, and I let out a sigh. I'm like... I got it. I haven't seen a game without Bran or AFK. Mm-hmm. I think in weeks. Yeah. And AFK is a real feel bad too. If you hit her on turn three, which somehow happens to me 98% of the games, even yeah. though it's only supposed to be one in seven. Uh, it, it's pretty feel bad. It's pretty I uh, feel bad. happened to me three games in a row yesterday. I was getting pretty salty and I tweeted on game three, I tweeted like a salty tweet, like, yeah, I'm just done for the day, right? And then I, ended up, I, w- I wasn't streaming, I was just playing. I ended up winning that game. I got first place. And I was just like, that's all I have to do. I have to complain Oops. publicly uh, so that even when I'm winning, I And then you win? Yeah, yeah. But then I have to, you know, eat crow and be like, all right, it's not always that bad. But yeah. Um, nah, AFK is uh, still, God, I get so stoked when I get AFK offered, so. Yeah. Do you think she might be one of the ones they rotate out? I think it's very likely, yeah. I think Because I think, like, I was kind of thinking maybe Jaraxxus, but, like, AFK, Rat King, and then 
Uh, maybe Lich King. I don't know. Well, what's going on with the creepy freaking tree behind Regis? Is that like a new tease at a at a Battlegrounds hero? Like, <laughs> if so, everyone would pick her without fail, no matter what, because she's the creepy yeah, tree on Earth. Just <laughs> horrifying. Like that tree eats grandchildren. Oh yeah, definitely. She's like, uh, yeah. If anybody who's listening, if you, you got to go look up the new hero portrait in Hearthstone, it's a scary tree. It looks like she's gonna gank somebody in the forest. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Or really I love more, it. Maybe absolutely terrifying. So. Uh, then I also took to Reddit and uh, confirmed that the amalgam change that was kind of hinted at is not until January. Although last time they were hinted at, they said they were thinking about it. This makes it sound like it's a done deal. Yeah, now it has a date. <laughs> mm-hmm. Which I'm Yeah, st- I found that interesting, by the way. So far, no card text has been changed or stats or anything in Battlegrounds if it's a real Hearthstone card. And the vibe I got from Blizzard is that they didn't really want to change anything about a card they wanted it to like retain it's they wanted they wanted it to look like it's regular hearthstone standard format card so if uh, amalgam goes like 2-2 i think was like a proposed i think i heard that i don't even know if that's right but that i heard that too the, but I, yeah i don't know if that's what they're actually gonna do but <laughs> that would be changing the number so i wonder if they'll like change the name of the card too just to retain that sort of perfection of of keeping the cards true to themselves or not like yeah just rename it with new artwork or something i wonder if that's part of the delay Maybe yeah. not. Maybe they'll not hold them so sacred. Like I, I, we, I was recommending that they change them for the record. Like, I think because they have a different mana icon that they look visually unique enough, it's okay if you tweak them. You just balance the game, right? But uh, we'll see where they yeah. go with that one. Keep the. They might current- just use the the one one amalgam art from Curator. That would. I mean, that's looks really cute and adorable, and I love it. So just make that a two two. That's in the pool, and then Curator gets the one one version. Right. Okay. Yeah. It's unique enough, I think. I think they should keep the art the same and just put like a little child's like pinwheel hat on top of its head, <laughs> so it looks a little <laughs> less threatening. Just put just put the creepy eyes from the tree on it. No, <laughs> like that, that eyes. if you put those eyes on an amalgam, it should start as like a thirty thirty because that's how creepy <laughs> and menacing that thing is, and it should be a, like a tier ten, like a ten star minion. Like that's just yeah, <laughs> perfect. <laughs> you just have to tear up multiple times for a chance at God. one. Year. Oh, yeah. did I tell the story? I was talking to I think it was uh, I think it was Thompson at BlizzCon. I don't think I told this story because we don't have enough to talk about today, but he said that when yeah, they were, I was like, when are they we were really testing, going into storytelling territory? <laughs> well, when they were, real quick, when they were testing Battlegrounds internally, at one point, one of the builds, the damage of the minion left over was the damage that was done to you. And they very quickly oh, were like, oh, th- this gets wildly out of control very quickly. And yeah, you can start yeah. heroes at like 200 health or something, but still, like, you know, a 70-70 minion is it's chunking pretty hard. So. Yeah. Yeah, I that, didn't see that version. That it sounds like it'd be so chaotic. That would have been insane. Yeah, and also the, just the amount of health you would have to end up giving them. I, I think what they ended on is far more elegant. Uh, well, I mean, it'd be the difference. Like, can you imagine a hyena that right now does like oh, yeah. a piddly amount of damage, but then you have all the beasts that gets like 30-something attack, and then that hits you in the face? That's the <laughs> only saving grace of facing hyenas right now is that they do so little damage if they live. It's kind of okay. <laughs> yeah, you're right. My lord and savior junk bot would be even more so. <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. Be ridiculous. <laughs> Absolutely ridiculous. Uh, apparently, Light Fang's going to get balanced to be a, uh, a plus two, plus one. Was also in this uh, this these Reddit comments by Danae, which good. Mm-hmm. I think it's the right balance. I think less yeah. health is it keeps things from getting way too out of control. Yeah, and I then, think that's fair. I, I I don't know how that interacts with Divine Shield exactly because Divine Shields re- remain and Poisonous remain roughly the same strength, but it does prevent value trading, perhaps you mm-hmm. go two for one. Or three for one, I guess, even on Divine Shield minions. So hopefully that's enough. I think it will be. I actually think Bran is stronger than Light Fang right now. Uh, I think an early Bran scales better than an early Light Fang. So I'm almost more worried about Bran at this moment. Yeah, good. Push Bran and then I can get Light Fang. (laughs) (laughs) Bran is great, you guys. (laughs) Especially if you get Bran and you are Bran. Then it's just... yeah. Yeah, you know, I'll, I'll, well, I look like Bran, yeah, so that's, <laughs> that's, it's a triple. <laughs> I play Bran, I have Bran on board, and I look like Bran. Uh, so 
I, I think Brienne is a little bit harder to play. Like, so for maybe a lower skilled player, somebody who's less confident, I think Light Fang's the way to go. But for very, very high tier players, I think Brienne is a little better at the moment. I think Brienne and, and Daryl are mostly hamstrung if you're playing on your phone because it's just so much selling mm. going on. <laughs> oh, yeah. Just, yeah. Once, if they, they said they were going to try and update it so you could sell from hand, and that would just be well, I guess it wouldn't really matter. That would make mobile better. That would make mobile better because it's just yeah. ugh, I've tried playing a couple rounds on my phone, and I'm just like, oh my god, would really help. I don't. I leave so much gold floating because I just can't get things done quickly enough. <laughs> I just don't play on mobile because it terrifies me. <laughs> me neither. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't want to lose MMR. I mean, I think it <laughs> helps performance wise though too, just because you you don't have the minion play entrance animation. I think you have to play it to sell it. If you could just sell it, you kind of skip an animation. Yeah. Sometimes minions have stuff they do when they hit the board and yeah, so on. Yep. My my propose my 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 need to want to like start a a, a happy picket line outside of of Blizzard to just be like faster animations in Hearthstone in general grows every day every day. <laughs> I just still want the voice lines because I think Cadgar's voice lines one of the best. So good. I don't want to lose that. <laughs> <sighs> We're coming shit. together for Dalaran, people. He's, he's <laughs> such a shit wizard. I'm still, I'm still burnt out on Cadgar after Legion. I'm still burnt out on Cadgar. Uh, um, anyway, just wrapping up this Reddit post by Danae. Uh, the version two of the stats page is still not coming until either January or February. If you, just a reminder, this was they kind of teased that they were going to be showing us significantly more information uh, on the stats page, like how many wins we have with each heroes, like our favorite heroes, all that kind of stuff. They previewed it somewhere, didn't they? Didn't we see a preview of the stats page at some point? Uh, yes, yeah, so there was like a blog post that had uh, screenshots. That's what it was. Yeah, it, yeah. it was a handsome looking stats page. There was a lot of interesting stuff on there. Um, so that's cool. And then the patch notes uh, should be out, like the proper patch notes the same day as the patch on December 5th. So keep your eye out for that. So, Oh, and uh, also th there was a follow-up in that Reddit, and I thought this was really important, so I just wanted to slide this into the episode, which was um, uh, user balanced, drag balanced Rago, is how I'm going to choose to pronounce that name. Uh, are you still changing hero fight rotation uh, so that you can't fight the same person again in two turns? It's the biggest one to a lot of people, and Danae replied saying yes, but not in the December 5th patch. So it is something they're working on, but it's not coming this month, uh, which is fine. I'm glad to hear they're working on it. I'm not used mm -hmm. to anything in Hearthstone happening this quickly, so I'm just, I'm jazzed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like, hey, we're kind of maybe having this problem, and they're like, yeah, we're on it. We're going to fix it in like a month. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> yeah, I think, I don't want to be the bearer of bad news. I think a lot of that's because this stuff was like already known and was like planned, but Battlegrounds came so fast, they didn't have time to like implement it ahead of time, right? So yeah, it does also to catch up constantly. So it, I wonder if that'll go forward in the future at the same pace. I sure hope so. But yeah, well, a lot of people have been quick to point out, like listening to the show, because we've been kind of reiterating, like, oh my good, battle goodness, Battlegrounds, it's moving so fast. They're, everyone's like, well, it is technically a beta, and they're not wrong. It's easy to kind of forget because mm -hmm. it, it's all anyone, it feels like it's all anyone's playing. Um, but yeah, I hope that once it's technically not in beta anymore that they still kind of just kind of keep up this pace because it's fun as heck. And, and and just to save your emails, I'm not suggesting that they adjust standard <laughs> at this pace. I think this would actually be too fast to make changes to standard, but yeah. Well, but auto battlers kind of need this, this level yes. of change, right? Like they get very repetitive very quickly if you're not updating them all the time. So I hope that after it does come out of beta that they keep up the every few weeks kind of pace that they've had because I think it's important to the genre and kind of the reason why I wasn't sure if Blizzard was going to get into the genre at all because I'm like, Blizzard doesn't do anything every few weeks. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I, think, I think they will because the support has been so enormous. I, it's exceeded their expectations so much. I think they're going to have to commit resources to it, so... I, I'm, I'm, there might be a little bit of a winding up period, you know, after the new year, maybe we'll see a month or two. That's slow. I'm worried about that. Hopefully not. But then I think they'll really start pushing hard on it. It's, it's been great for the game. They, I think they're really happy with the response. So. Yeah. It's super fun. It's like, I mean, obviously Garrett missed his card back, but I know <laughs> like I, I made sure I got into ladder and got my card back, but at the same time, I've been having so much more fun in Battlegrounds than I have in Standard in recent times. And 
I think it's just Garrett and I were talking about this a little bit before the show. I just love the like it's not like a discrete win or loss. It's like there's like a sliding scale of how good and bad you do. So I don't have the same ladder anxiety. It's so good. <laughs> yes. Oh my god. I'm so glad you said that. I I was t- when the when the auto battler genre first started taking off, like auto when it was only auto chess. I was at like um, something with Blizzard. I forget what it was. And I was talking to um, Ben Thompson about it. We already mentioned Ben Thompson. And I was like, I love that that in Hearthstone, it's a super binary experience. You either win or you lose. Exactly what you said. So the, with, with an auto battler, you can get third and be pretty happy. Even if mm-hmm. you get seventh or eighth and you lose, you lose really quickly. So your time commitment's <laughs> not high. So there's this constant, like, if I lose, I lost quickly. I didn't lose time. Like, you can play a 40-minute Arsenal game and still lose. And lose, nothing. yeah. And it's awful. If you play a 40-minute Battlegrounds game, that means you're probably in the top two. So it's worth it. And the time commitment matches up to the level of reward or measure of success at least Mm -hmm. which is like such a perfect psychological thing to make you feel good about it so you nailed a sentiment that i've had for such a long time (laughs) i'm 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 glad you see that that's so cool yeah so that's i've been spending so much time in there and i love it and it makes it makes me feel good sometimes ladder doesn't make me feel good so (laughs) sorry garrett yes no it's all right (laughs) Uh, I, I share those sentiments. And for me, it goes, it, heck, that it, it makes me think of when I got really obsessed with PUBG two years ago because it was the same thing. I'm like, no, oh, mm. you know, if I have a bad game, whatever, it's over in like five minutes and I'm on to the next one. Uh, yeah. So it's, I'm so glad that it's now in a game that I can play literally anywhere, even though I'm kind of afraid to play it uh, on my phone. <laughs> so, <laughs> but that can, you know, th- th- that can be improved over time. So. Anyways, let's uh, let's cut the Battlegrounds talk. We're going to talk about cards. Before we do that, we have one more sponsor to thank today, and that is Away Luggage. They are back. They are still here making amazing luggage. That's extremely... It's the nicest, like, thing I've ever had. Like, it makes me feel like an adult. I feel like an adult <laughs> because of my Away Luggage. Because I mentioned this before, before my Away Luggage, I had, like, a hand-me-down paisley suitcase with one bum wheel and one broken handle. It was just... That's it. That that was luggage. And then Away was like, hey, uh, you know, we'd like to sponsor an episode of the Angry Chicken. I'm like, sure. And then I, I get my Away luggage. And I'm like, oh, my God. It's like the Cadillac of, <laughs> of luggage. <laughs> this is amazing. And uh, both sizes of the carry-ons, because there are options, have an optional uh, ejectable battery. You, you know where I'm getting at. You, you got to sell a lot of things. Uh, with Dance and Daryl, all right? You're going to be burning up that battery in the airport. <laughs> and what are you going to do? You're going to go rub knees with that with that weird person sitting at the gate to get to the one charger? No, you can go sit at Starbucks. You can have a nice red eye before your red eye and charge your phone and play, keep playing Hearthstone right next to your luggage, wherever you want to sit. It's wonderful. So you should go check them out. It's awaytravel.com slash TAC20. You're going to get $20 off your order. Uh, when you go to awaytravel.com slash TAC20. And uh, they've got so many more features. I'm not going to bore you with all of them, but you should probably know that there's also free shipping within the 48 lower states. There's a 100-day trial. You can literally travel with it to see if you like it. And there's a lifetime warranty. So if somehow my the, the ghost of my bum wheel from my hand-me-down paisley piece of crap luggage comes back to haunt me, I'm covered. It's wonderful. So go check them out. Get $20 off a suitcase. Go to awaytravel.com slash TAC20 and use the promo code TAC20 during checkout. And now we're going to talk so many cards. And as usual, you might be thinking to yourself, it's Tuesday. You missed some. To which I say, no, audio listener, there is a visual component to the show. And if it wasn't out this morning when I got into Photoshop, it's not on this episode. That's the cutoff. <laughs> That's the cutoff, everybody. But it's okay. We'll talk about them on Monday. We're going to do tack on Monday next week so that we can wrap up all the cards before we actually do the uh, the release on Tuesday. Yeah, and then Tuesday we will just do a live stream whenever it goes live. Open our packs. Jocelyn will get all of the legendaries. I will get three. Of course. And uh, <laughs> all will be right with the universe. So. How many packs do you have to open this time, actually? I th- I've got like 170-something packs Same. right now sitting there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I did both pre-orders and then the quests, So, and I have a lot of gold sitting around, so let's do it. And then, and then I'll just go play Battlegrounds, maybe. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. I'm actually really excited about the like a potential mid-range Dragon Paladin, because mid-range Paladin back in GVG, I think to this day, is still my favorite deck of all time. So... <laughs> 
there's a chance that my favorite archetype is going to come back with a vengeance. So I'm actually, I'm actually I, pretty stoked. I love that. You're like dream archetype. The thing you're most excited about is a mid range paladin, which sounds so pedestrian. I loved it. Like I loved it so combo. much. Rip. I don't give a shit. Do you know how much I miss muster for battle and shield and mini bot? Do you have any idea? All this ridiculous new mm. stuff. And you're just oh. play mid range. I don't care. Okay. I love it. I love playing. That's- things quite, on curve quite charming that are good enough that makes me happy i don't know that we're going to be in a hearthstone era where <laughs> good enough is good enough <laughs> <laughs> very true very very true but uh we're going to kick things off with a uh, hunter with no new druid cards to talk about this week with a uh, diving griffin it's a three mana four one rare hunter beast with rush and a battle cry that reads draw a rush minion from your deck all right, I'm a little less grumpy about that rush side quest from last week now. This is interesting. Yeah, I like it. I mean, I think it's doing multiple things you want it to do. It's it's fast, it trades up well, and it refills the hand. I'm I'm still not really sold on the rush side quest personally, but I think anybody could just drop this card in the deck, whether it's a Highlander deck or some kind of beast synergy mid rangey thing. It's just uh, does a lot. And the one health doesn't matter because you're trading it in. So, right, it's, it's solid and, card. Yeah, you can think about it as like three mana removal spell that also draws you a rush minion. Like that's you think about it in that way. I love that card. I would I would play that spell. So why wouldn't I play this minion? <laughs> a shadow what do you, with upside. Yeah, actually. Yeah, yeah there you go. Exactly. Yes. Uh, do you? How do you feel about side quests just in general, Regis? Like, do you do you feel like they've kind of hit the right balance, or are they they not powerful enough? I I think that the challenge with side quests is just going to be when you draw them late because they're not going to start in your opening hand like a normal quest. So, you know, it's still going to take you a few turns. And if you don't have the right follow up, then it may take you five or six or seven turns. And I think that means that the power levels aren't quite high enough or there's at least some imbalance between the, the requirements and the power level, maybe, maybe lower the requirements or up the power level one. So I, I'm iffy about them. I'm, I'm sure there'll be one or two that sticks, but I have a feeling they're going to kind of be like uh, the spirits from Rastakhan rumble where mm. most of them just don't do anything and yeah. don't really feel competitive, but I'm, I'm hopeful to be wrong. I want every card to have a home. So <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Stormhammer is our other hunter card that we're talking about today. It's a three mana, three attack, two durability, epic hunter weapon uh, that reads, doesn't lose durability while you control a dragon. And I'm just going to shorthand all of the, if dragon is good in this deck, then this is a good (laughs) card on this episode by saying, this is a dove with dragons. That's how we're going to shorthand it on this episode. Love it. (laughs) DWD. Yeah, I I totally agree. I, I get weird hate on these cards when I review them. Because I say, like, well, obviously, if Dragon Hunter's good, this is a high-impact card, but the likelihood of that is sort of low. I don't think that's particularly likely to happen because Hunters are faster decks traditionally, care way more about pressure and tempo, and Dragons as a as a tribe have generally been more about value and, and blade games, so they don't align very well for me. So, like, I give this card three stars, and people are like, Regis, that's a five-star card. It's better than Eaglehorn Bow. I'm like, yeah, but <laughs> only if it's <laughs> conditional. So, I mean, yeah, of course, Double Dragons is a great way to put it. That's perfect. I guess because we all, another thing we say frequently when talking about cards is in a vacuum. I guess I could start saying in a dragon vacuum. <laughs> that sounds horrifying by the way a dragon yes, it does. sucks up everything yeah. and touches like oh god From actually the... kind of on brand for galacron lore wise yeah, technically yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> he did eat everything in front of him <laughs> this summer from the creators of sharknado <laughs> <laughs> dragon back <vacuum. laughs> yep. i'd watch that <laughs> go be the best oh, sold Kibler actually financed the movie. He's, <laughs> <laughs> he's the producer. <laughs> yeah. Shiro Productions presents. <laughs> the best. Wonderful. Uh, all right, let's, uh, let's just move on to Mage. Uh, yeah, it's sort of remember, pretty you know, big old conditional on the dragons there. It's amazing if Dragon Hunter takes off. It's not going to see play if it doesn't. Uh, moving on to Mage with Arcane Breath, a one-mana rare mage spell that reads, deal two damage to a minion. If you're holding a dragon, discover a spell. 
Yeah. It seems DWD. powerful. Yeah. <laughs> DWD. But yeah. Uh, I will say, I actually think it, it might be solid even without dragons in this case, it, especially if there's some kind of tempo mage that, that loves cheap spells. It's cycling with uh, Chinvala there. We're going to talk about in a minute or, you know, just uh, mana cyclone sorts of things. Sorcerer's Apprentice. It, it might be good enough even without dragons. And then the dragon is just an upside if you happen to have one in hand. So I think it just looks great all around. Yeah, plus like random spell generation, you might just end up with this. And honestly, one mm. one mana for yep. two damage is not the end of the world. You put it where you want it. Well, minion wants. <laughs> thanks, Joss. Thanks. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> two. That's two unintentional know, today. Two. Normally, normally it's it's one a show, but yeah, no, they're definitely two today. <laughs> all the uh, one one grower. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. can't forget the grower yeah, that, was, that was some s tier un- uh. unintentional innuendo <laughs> but yeah, so one one mana two damage to a minion cheap spells mage go yes mm-hmm. yeah i like this card a lot uh dragon caster six mana four four rare mage minion not a dragon if you're only listening via audio this is someone riding a dragon, not a dragon themselves. With a battle cry that reads, if you're holding a dragon, your next spell this turn costs zero. I really, this, like, this This excites me. And this, this is what I look for in, like, dragon effects. Something that makes me this excited that I want to f- try and force dragons in a class. I like this effect a lot. Yeah, me too. And I, I really want Dragon Mage to be a thing. So I am on board with this. And I think we talked about it was the last week or the week before that, you know, seven dragons makes a package. So I think that you have rooms left in a deck to put something like this in. And it's a really, really powerful effect. Yeah, I'm on board with all that. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to describe something here real fast, though. So I have this like logical, you know, reason reason based assessment of cards usually, and that's how I do my card reviews, and that's what we've been talking about so far. And then I have what I what I call like my ultra instinct reviews, which is just where like I shut out all logic and reason, and I'm like, <laughs> man, I just like not feeling this card. This is one of those like four star logic cards, and I kind of think it's like a two star ultra instinct card. There's part of me that has some doubts about this one. It's just a zero mana four four, which. I know that sounds good at first glance, like zero mana four four, and we have Arcane Tyrant and Anubisith Defender as sort of precedence for that sort of play. But there's something about this that still just leaves me wondering. It's of course you got to have the dragon support, but even when you mm-hmm. do, a dragon deck and mage is probably going to be very late game oriented, very value oriented, and I don't know that the like counter tempo of a zero mana four four in the late game. He's going to be worth the slot in your deck. Like, would you just rather run another big crazy thing as opposed to a counter tempo 4-4? Four, four? Like, would you just have a Doomsayer? You know what I mean? Like, Blizzard Doomsayer instead of Dragon Caster Blizzard Ping. Those sorts of things. So, yeah, when I look at it logically, I like it. But in my heart, I have some doubts. I'll say that. <laughs> that was well, what it- about a 4-4 four, four and a Pyroblast? <laughs> it's uh that's fine too but i mean are you casting power blast if it's not ending the game i mean like i don't know i i don't want to be a stickler on some of these i gave this card four stars for the record uh, i like it i just i love I have, that I your concerns. version of throwing all logic out is still an extremely logical assessment because yeah <laughs> you, you really went through like uh, kind of the the pain of playing this in a realistic scenario Sure. Oh. <laughs> I do this for a living, so. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I, um, I mean, you're not, you're not wrong. It's kind of like the, the, the backwards order of, of things. Um, so it's yeah, like, normally we cast the spell first and then get the discount on the minion, right. but this way you cast the minion first and get the discount on the spell. So yeah, kind of backwards, but yeah. still probably good. Maybe. I would still go to bad for dragon caster, but you cause me pause Regis. You cause me pause. That's, the, that's all I want to do is introduce some skepticism so we can think critically about cards. That's <laughs> the goal. I don't care about being right. <laughs> Who cares about being right? Like, Oh, Regis, you're going to be so wrong when these finally see play. Okay, cool. Good. I was surprised. I learned something. That's great. See, and I just get <laughs> no super pride. stoked and super hyped about everything. And then I got to be right about something. <laughs> <laughs> just be like, yes, it has dragons. Five stars. <laughs> yeah. Nailed it. Yeah. 
Uh, and then there's Chen Vala, the final mage card we're going to talk about today. It's a three mana, two five legendary mage elemental that reads after you cast three spells in a turn, summon a five five elemental. No dragon, zero stars. But it's a two five for free. <laughs> like, I'm already I'm interested. <laughs> like, oh, there's oh, there's text on this card too. Okay, what's it say? <laughs> um, yeah, uh, I, I mean, I guess the gem says you can only have one of these in your deck, which is probably the the only downside I can really find to Chinvala. Uh, but uh, oh, really? <laughs> oh, enlighten us, Regis. I, uh, I, I came down a little hard on this card. Here's my here's my deal with it, right? So I, I think that I think I want to compare it to Flame Waker most readily, and I like doing comparables, right? And uh, we all know Flame Waker in, in a past era, or some of us might know, was really, really crazy. It hasn't done much since it came back uh, right now. And I think Flame Waker's way better than this because Flame Waker is, is an active effect. In other words, you dictate the reward and when it happens, and you can use it to either outright kill your opponent sometimes or remove their board. Whereas Shinvala is a passive effect. You do this, and then you wait a turn to reap the benefits of it and you pass initiative back to your opponent so that they can just, like, deal with it. Sometimes that's going to happen when you just play Chinvala because you don't have the follow-up immediately, but even if you get, like, two five fives or three five fives, and you realize the dream, I don't know that you did anything because your opponent might just brawl it or whatever, right? And that means you didn't really get any value out of this big commitment you made, both from a deck-building standpoint but also from a resource standpoint. Now, Mana Cyclone can help kind of relieve that resource pressure by refilling your hand after you just dumped it, which really does help a lot. That, that eases my concerns a little bit. But with Flame Waker, I like the fact that you can kill four things when you played your Flame Waker and you know you're getting like a four for one on your Flame Waker. With this one, I'm worried you're just going to get a one for one at best sometimes, but also ruin your deck and your hand in the process. So... I don't want to be the bearer of bad news. Oh, I, they should have just called this Jinvala ruiner of decks. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. So uh, not to underestimate a 5-5, five five, because certainly against, you know, aggressive decks that can't resolve a couple 5-5s, five obviously it's going to make sense. But I, so I think I gave this card like three stars, if I remember right. I forget. So that to me means, you know, it's it's got some fringe potential. It could be in like a tier three deck, but definitely won't be strong enough to, you know, define the meta in any sort of way. Does that sound reasonable or crazy instinctual? I'm no, I curious. think it's. I, I think that's ex <laughs> extremely reasonable. Uh, I, but like, I was kind of again. My earlier comment was mostly kind of in a vacuum conversation of like a two five for three. All right, cool. I'm already interested. It has a potential upside. But you're absolutely right. Like the the caveat of having to cast free spells. Well, what does this ask of me? Well, it kind of it probably asks me in a lot of scenarios to play inefficiently. Mm hmm. Right. And and you're absolutely right. You want to compare it to Flame Waker? I'm, I'm not. I'm, I will not fight you on that. I think Flame Waker is absolutely better. And you're right. Like uh, until Thursday, we we've been able to put Flame Waker in our standard decks right now in Mage, and it, ha it hasn't been enough. Now, granted, there's a lot. I more. forgot that Flame Waker was one of the cards they brought back. I'll be totally honest. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> like yeah, and, the, and once you bring it up, I was like, oh damn, yeah, we have had that opportunity, and no one's really taken advantage of that. So yeah, I mean, Mage isn't I mean, exactly having its heyday right now in standard. Mm -hmm. So. It's also, I think, playing a role is like Flame, Flame Wicker is a great card. It can't do it by itself. Yeah. I wonder if there is some sort of elemental like mage build that can make use of this because so you have to cast three spells in the turn, right? So if you cast a spell before, does that before you play Chinvala, does that count as one? Like you played it during your turn. Well, there is Elemental Evocation, the card yeah. that's zero mana that reduces the cost of elementals. That was a, a hotly debated and, and perhaps still hotly debated. I don't know if I ever heard official confirmation from Blizzard. To be honest, my assumption is that it will not count if you Elemental Evocation. That would not be one of the three. Uh, Dragon Soul doesn't work that way. Like mm -hmm. Dragon Soul is a very similar effect we saw for the Priest Legendary Weapon in Kobolds and Catacombs. You had to have the Dragon Soul up before playing the spell, as far as I remember and have been told recently. So I think you can evocate it out, which makes it cheap and gives you mana to play your three spells, which is nice, but I but don't it won't think the evocation count. Yeah. will count as, as towards summoning your 5-5. Five five. But we'll we'll have to wait and see to be 100% sure, unless Blizzard has confirmed it and I didn't hear. Uh, yeah, I don't remember reading anything about it, so that's why uh, the question came up. I was just like, huh, this, this could maybe work, but 
yeah, that's kind of a workaround cheaty way to make it work. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah, I'm 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 still kind of on the fence about Mage as a whole. Like I'm really excited about Malagos and I am more excited than Regis about Dragoncaster. But uh <laughs> I mean we're still we still have four mage cards to see. So I'm kind of reserving like Learn Draconic is not I'm not running out in the street screaming mage is back. Uh, so Hey man, I gave uh, Mage Quest five stars last expansion. <laughs> uh, you know the old Doom Quest. I, uh, I so I'm rooting for it too. Like I wanted to get there. Believe me, I need redemption on that one. Ooh, <laughs> okay. Spell Mage works. I would yeah, uh, not talk about that. I, I wouldn't have backed you up on that one. <laughs> I don't want to answer any questions. I, hey, I thought Infinite Value was really good because of Doctor Boom and uh, Rexar. And I was like, man, Doc, the Infinite Value hero powers are crazy. But it's random spells, and random spells suck, so it's not crazy. <laughs> Confirmed. Yeah, and random mechs got less good once they nerfed the pool. Like, True, had the pool exactly. Street too. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Kind of reflected the, the challenge mage faces, yeah. Precisely. Yeah. Uh, it's interesting to think about that in retrospect. Um, uh, we have one Paladin card that uh, that has been revealed uh, between Tuesdays, uh, how we like to run our, our show here, and it's uh, the Bronze Explorer. It's the Explorer Dragon for the Paladin class. It's a three-mana, two-three common Paladin Dragon with life steal and a battle cry that reads, Discover a Dragon. And so uh, I'm a little cranky. No caveat. Just, you just get to do it. <laughs> yeah, you just, you just get it. I've, I've been a little cranky about the Explorer's. Um, I mean, there's no caveat to the Azure. Is there a caveat to any of the Explorers? I don't think there is. I don't no. think so, no. no. They always have so, a no. positive effect. All of Explorer. the Dragon Explorer, the Primordial Explorer for Hunter, the, the Azure Explorer for Mage, they're all just Battlecry Discover a Dragon. Mm -hmm. um, so I've, I've been a little cranky about all of them because I think they're all a little too expensive for, for what you get. Um, Azure Explorer probably being the, the biggest offender, obviously, being four mana as opposed to three. Um, so I'm... I don't... It's... This is one of those things where I don't know. I just feel like I'm repeating myself because we're talking about dragons. It's like you, if the dragons are worth it in the class, it's this is probably going in because dragon refill is really important to that type of archetype, and that's exactly what Battlecry Discover Dragon gives you. You now have played one, and guess what? You put one back in your hand. Cool. You're not sweating anymore about not having dragon activators. Uh, but, Especially in Paladin, by the way, who has a lot of like hand buff dragon stuff from mm -hmm. uh, Rise of Shadows. So it's even better in Paladin to keep your hand full of dragons, perhaps. Yeah. Yeah. And like, I, so I feel like uh, <laughs> kind of like you Regis with your, well, okay, I'm going to throw logic out. Like if I'm not, cause if I kind of look at this at face value, I'm not in love with this car, but I'm all, like, but the, the Paladin fan of me just goes, they've got buffs. It's fine that it's a two, three. It doesn't matter. I'm going to make this bigger. <laughs> it's going to hit harder and it's actually going to heal me for an amount that's worth something. You know, it's funny. I'm actually a little bit opposite you here. Like, logically speaking, I've been been pretty uh, soft on these cards. Like, you know, three stars, I think, maybe across the board for all the explorers or maybe even two for one of them. I, I can't remember. But <laughs> there's a part of me essentially that's like, man, we've seen a lot of just three mana discover a thing cards work in Hearthstone. And I wonder if these won't follow suit. So, I mean, I, I guess Stonehill Defender, the, the biggest example of that. It having mm. Taunt certainly helped in that regard. But Dragon is another synergy, kind of like Taunt in a way. And then uh, what's the card, it's, uh, the 2-3 these days that uh, does the same thing from Old Doom, I think, the three-mana guy that was played in Shaman Battlecry stuff early on. I can't remember his name. Oh, oh God. Um, uh, you know what I'm talking about, right? It's a neutral <laughs> card. Yeah. What's that guy I'm called? Is it, actually, maybe it's Rise of Shadows. Oh, Volpira Scoundrel. That's it. Like, oh like, yeah, yeah. Volpira Scoundrel. Like three mana, discover a thing, right? And I would say again, like spells for Volpira are probably better than dragons, and taunts from Stonehill might be better than dragons. But <laughs> these things just kind of pop their way into decks, particularly control decks or Highlander decks that are just looking to fill a slot. Maybe it's not a dragon card at all. Maybe it's just a a value generator speed bump card, as I call them. Like you just happily play the speed bump against a, a faster deck and they have to run over your two, three, get a little life back, uh, et cetera. Yeah. I should have just said Fox person. I was trying to recall the name of the damn race. <laughs> I'm like, it's Fox person. Person. race from wow. <laughs> what is it called? I couldn't uh. even think of that much. So, <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, shall we just move on right into priest? Sure. Cool. 
Uh, Breath of the Infinite is up next. It's a three-mana rare priest spell that deals two damage to all minions. If you're holding a dragon, only damage enemies. This is a pretty unique dragon trigger, just in that way. Yeah, like, this whether is it's, cool. You know, whether it's good or bad, I think this is, I like this card. Um, but that's also a really unique dragon trigger. Yeah, it's, it seems um, uh, dull with dragons, I guess, that we're calling it. Yeah, yeah, it seems, <laughs> it seems obvious. Yeah. I, I will say, like, it, Priest has a lot of options when it comes to removal, so just depending on how stat breakpoints line up, like if there's no two health stuff in the meta, this is going to get left behind. If everything's three health, like, this just doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. So but, if everyone's you know, playing uh, Explorer Blackies. Dragons with three health, then we're not exactly. going to be uh, breathing <laughs> infinitely? Precisely. So uh, this is one of those cards that, that could get left behind, but certainly has the power level and efficiency to pop in, just depending if there's a lot of lackeys, for instance. Like, this might be great to wipe out lackeys. So, mm. yeah, it seems solid. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's hard for me, like, because, yeah, chat rooms, you know, Infrared, you're saying three mana consecrate with, with a dragon. It's like, yeah, that like when you think about it that way, it seems kind of crazy. But it's like, are we going back to Pyromancer combos as priests? Do we want to bother? They've they, they been, been doing pretty well this year, you know, not so concerned with that like type of reliance on board control. Yeah. And for the record, I, does consecrate even get played anymore without equality? <laughs> not like really. really. Does, right. <laughs> like, you wouldn't play consecration without a combo piece for it these days. I don't think so. I don't know if that's really a, a great, you know, defense of this card necessarily. Again, I, a consecration, certainly a fine card. This is pretty solid looking too, but I don't know if I'd use consecration as a, measuring point for this one or like a uh, yeah for this i mean one. it makes me think of volcanic potion which did see quite a bit of right. play but it was also i mean it's, it's it was a product of its time and its meta yeah i was gonna say yeah volcanic potion was quite a while ago now that was uh mead streets of gadgets i believe mm -hmm. yeah. well yeah now we have like four mana eight eights and stuff so yeah so <laughs> <laughs> i don't know like the game is in a totally different place yeah yeah if this a deal eight damage all minions for three mana maybe it gets better. <laughs> Only maybe. <laughs> yeah, it's, exactly. It seems balanced and fair, so no one's ever going to put this in a deck. <laughs> right. In the Sin of Dragons, it has to be broken. So. Yeah. 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 So uh, with that in mind, let's move on to Chrono Breaker. Uh, five mana, four, five, rare priest dragon with a death rattle that reads, if you're holding a dragon, deal three damage to all enemy minions. Do we like this better? One more damage, not conditional on the dealing damage to enemy minions, just conditional if you're holding a dragon, but it's also, it's a death rattle, which boy, I, I've seen fewer cards this week, like make folks want to debate than, than <laughs> Chrono Breaker. Um, really and I, interesting. Yeah. I like this card. I think it's cool. I like a lot of people when I first saw it, thought it said battle cry. And that was like one of the most common sentiments in my YouTube comments too. And I was like, oh my God, that's so busted. <laughs> but I actually think uh, as a death rattle, it, it might just feel a little awkward. Like you are again, giving your opponent the ability often to determine how that death rattle is resolved. So it's like, if mm -hmm. they have two three threes on board, they're just going to trade them in, right? And then play stuff. So I, I, it feels like it could be just too slow or, or too frictionless in some ways. Like it's just it doesn't cause problems for your opponent necessarily all that often, or sometimes they just ignore it and punch you in the face and you're dead. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't like being dead. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't <laughs> have time. I'm, I'm, I'm uh. curious your alternatives. Cause if it's, if it's a hotly debated card, I definitely want to hear um, more perspectives. Uh, I just saw a lot of debate like around competitive HS and whatnot of, of people going, Oh, you're probably being too hard on this. Cause it is a minion that your opponent doesn't want to kill. And it does have a decent body, which they're not wrong in that regard. Um, and, and like, I get excited cause I like, I, I, I like to call these puzzle cards. It's like you're putting out a puzzle to be solved for your opponent. And I do like those, but honestly, I struggle to think of a star example outside of Sylvanas, which mm. is probably the best example of that type of card that we've seen in Hearthstone. Um, and I, I struggle to really think of any other examples that have really, really broken through to, to be a meta card. Um, so yeah, I, uh, there was that, like, is it called Fate Weaver? That secret death rattle for Druid? It mm. was very much a puzzle card because it was a secret death rattle. That card never got played, though, so we can't That's really use true. it. That's true, yeah. That's a metric. Oh, yeah, I was, we were so excited about that card, too. We are like, <laughs> yeah, oh, man, so secret? Cool. 
A secret death rattle is so cool. Oh, I don't even uh, know what expansion that's from or anything. <laughs> Fate Weaver is, is, a, is the, a priest did dragon. Did I get the name this, right or did I make it up? Did uh, I make up the name? Fate Weaver is a probably just, priest card from this expansion, isn't it? Oh, <laughs> what's the revealed? name of that card? Wasn't there, I know the card that you're thinking of. Wasn't that like Witchwood? I don't, what's Maybe? the name of it? I, I, I can't don't remember. Remember the name? I'm so, I've always been. no one ever played I'm it. Right now. So, yeah. <laughs> I just, I remember the card reveal episode and being excited about it. And then I remember oh, never oh, talking fate about it. Again. Spinner, fate oh, spinner. spinner. Fate there spinner. There you go. There it is. I was close. That's where I got the fate. Okay. Yeah. How dare you weave when we spin. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> yes. Yeah. So no, I'm, um, I think unless, unless you're really, really struggling to fill your dragon priest deck with dragons, I, I'm not particularly stoked on the idea of chrono, chrono breaker. I think it could just be one of those cards that when it pops up in random generation, you discover it or whatever, it's like, okay, yeah, that's not bad. That's pretty solid. But maybe it doesn't make the deck list. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. We need to just make a, uh, a glossary of, of podcast like keywords where we just say things that are, that mean a, a summary of things like uh, if dragons are good, then yes. And also that <laughs> like, this will be interesting in random generation, but won't get a deck slot. I need it's a long acronym though. Like- yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we just, I don't know, we just call it like RG instead of RNG, random generation. Mm. There we go. We'll figure it out one day. And we'll, uh, we'll ship everyone a printed book like it's mm. 2001. Sounds cheap. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Mind Flayer, are we, are we going with Karaj? Uh, yeah, uh, it's exactly circa, what I like. yeah. circa Yasharaj? Same Yeah, logic. that's yeah. how I would say okay. it. Okay, yep. cool. Well, we're going with Mind Flayer Karaj then. It, someone's going to think I'm saying garage. This is, you're not keeping, well, actually, you know, you are kind of keeping a minion in this garage. (laughs) Yeah, Um, you kind of (laughs) are. Yeah, so it's a three mana, three, three legendary priest minion with a battle cry that reads, choose an enemy minion, death rattle, summon a new copy of it. This, this, in an expansion that so far is full of really cool cards, I think I might think this one is the coolest. Mm. I really. This is neat. Like this effect. I mean, it's a, it's, it's like a, instead of build a, build a bear, it's build a shredder. Like <laughs> you get to choose what goes inside the, the, the death rattle. Um, now granted, I mean, obviously there's that caveat of, well, if there's nothing on board, well, sure. But how often does that happen? Right. Right. Like, like, it never it, happens. It's always, your opponent always plays something. I mean, maybe in like really grindy control, like warrior V warrior stuff, but well, you're not playing Warriors. You're not, yeah. <laughs> Warrior, but uh, like that never happens. There's always something on board. It's yeah. Just, and control Warriors aren't going to be a thing in Hearthstone now anyway. So <laughs> you don't have to ever enough. worry about that matchup. We'll talk about that later, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I, to me, right, look, here's how I see this card. It's like sometimes you get to park a Deathwing in your garage, which, I mean, yeah, he tears <laughs> out the roof, but like it's awesome because he's Deathwing. You get a 12-12 for three mana. And sometimes you get to park like a three, three in your garage, you know, like a mind control tech or something, whatever. That's kind of weird, but you're, you're cool with it. Cause that's six, six in stats for three mana. And it is like a piloted shredder that you get to choose the death rattle. And sometimes it's going to be way, way better. And the, so the power level of this makes tons of sense to me. Like it's very strong. The question is maybe context, like who's running this. Is it a tempo priest deck. I don't think combo priest makes room for this. I don't know if control priest even makes room for this because it is a little passive. It just kind of sits there. It doesn't necessarily do much, but I mean, if you have shadow word death and your opponent plays a mountain giant and you got six mana, it's like, okay, mind flayer shadow word death. I've got an eight, eight tucked into this guy now. And I, I think that makes it pretty exciting as a, just a something to toss into a deck. I don't know if it's at home, anywhere perfectly but i have a feeling some deck can can make room for it uh that's pretty much exactly how i'm feeling about this because i'm like well i don't know what what's the worst case like what do you what do i absolutely need to not be completely bumped with this i don't know two two i'd be happy with a three mana five five so spread that out over two bodies sure but the and garrett's happy with a two two (laughs) yes jocelyn yes i am (laughs) so (laughs) like the 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 the, the healing the ceiling is so high for this uh, in terms of just some of the shenanigans that you could pull off. Thank God. Cause, cause Deathwing has to fit in the garage. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Good thing we have a high ceiling. <laughs> yeah. uh, Jabber wants to know, uh, Laura man and Jabber wants to know if you have more than one, is it a garage band? 
<laughs> yes. Yes, it is. You guys are on fire today, chat room. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to interact, but you're making me laugh. Um, yeah, it's, uh, I, I love this card. I love this card a lot. So. We don't we don't do stars, um, but yeah, I, I would yeah. give this card five stars if I was doing. You don't do rating. stars. We don't know. We don't people. do. We used to do uh, letter grades, and then it just got ridiculous because we were debating between like, is this a B or a B plus, and it makes a really uh, big difference. <laughs> so we just stopped. <laughs> we're just like, this is cool. I like it. <laughs> yeah, I kind of want to move like a hundred point scale, and just be like really, really, <laughs> really granular. Really granular. Get right it's down not, into it. No, it's not a seventy four. It's a seventy seven. How dare you? <laughs> you you take that. 74 and you get out <laughs> unsub yeah. but, like I, I honestly hate star ratings to be frank uh i i just kind of had to do them because people were demanding it and it's really funny from a content standpoint to go back later and look at them i i think the the goal of reviews for me is really just to make people think about the cards and how to use them and con- context and how classes are structured and how you know mid-range versus control versus combo and how all these things might fit a card. I don't really care about the star ratings. It's just a, a, a good mechanism to, to hook people, I think. And that's it really for me. Yeah. Well, let's, uh, let's move on to rogue. We got two new rogue cards this week. We have stowaway, a five mana, four, four rare rogue minion with a battle cry that reads, if there are cards in your deck that didn't start there, draw two of them. So this means draw two of the cards that didn't start in your deck, not draw a card in a copy. Right. That is my understanding. Okay. <laughs> so you're, you're to, to be more pointed on that, like if there's only one card. Right. You draw one card. You would just draw one. I think. That's, yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. an okay. important distinction. Yeah. I haven't heard many people bring that up. That's, that's yeah. nice. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Hearthstone loves to be flexible in the meaning of their words on cards, mm-hmm. but this says draw. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. I, that didn't even enter, enter my mind. So uh, I'm going to go with, yeah, it's going to, Draw one if there's only one. I think of all the times when I've played a card one way, thinking it worked that way, and then it didn't work that way, and I'm like, okay, so how can Joss Brain totally screw this up? <laughs> <laughs> and that is how, is by assuming that I would get copies and always get two cards. <laughs> fair, fair. Um, but yeah, there's, there's, there's another one of those cards where it's like, I'm not sure how good this is going to be in practice because there's, I feel like, so many different things you could try with this that I... I don't know which one like could potentially be meta defining or archetype defining for rogue, but this seems like such a strong effect. Uh, and rogues have had so many different ways to put things into their deck and have only had kind of limited, like the limited ways to, to interact with it. And this is, this is like, just seems like such a strong tutor effect. Academic espionage. <laughs> one, two, one mana Tyrians. Yeah, <laughs> they're the dream. Yeah, no, I, I think that's actually a legitimate use case. Uh, here's the, here's the thing with this card, right? I, I think if you have to structure your deck, if you have to build a crazy deck to support this card, it's not very good. But I don't think you probably have to build a crazy deck to support this card. I think maybe just having a few things that shuffle valuable things into your deck, whether that's espionage, wax a dread certainly comes to mind. Y- you might not need much. And that probably makes this card. Okay. I, mm-hmm. again, I don't, I don't think this is going to be like a tier one rogue deck, but it, it does help fuel some of the things rogue likes to do, or perhaps we want to do with rogue, even if they're not competitively viable. So <laughs> I, I'm really excited about this one and hopeful for it. I mean, it's not going to blow my mind, but I think it's a solid card. Yeah, I, uh, I've got my eye on you still away. Cards like this always just kind of freak me out. I'm like, there's probably some kind of weird combination I am not thinking about, but. Fall Warrior players are just waiting. So <laughs> excited to, <laughs> to make you draw the bomb. I thought they were waiting to ruin my Highlander fun and yeah. it didn't happen. So, yeah, yeah. Oh, imagine this with Hakar Bloods. Bloods mm. from a car, you draw two, and then they shuffle even more back in. Oh boy, that's a nightmare. Yeah, it's okay though because you can wipe those out of your deck now. Oh, we'll get there. Well, we'll get there. Oh, is that? I couldn't remember if that was in a in, in this show or not, but yeah, I think we did. I think we'll 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 probably re- offer you Regis 
a chance yeah. to exit it before neutrals if you're uh, running out of time. No, it's okay. No, it's fine. I get to talk about cards all day. Cool. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, which brings us. I have to leave right before the end, though. You tease me about there being weird stuff at the end. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's like 30 seconds beforehand. Yeah. Uh, Flicks uh, Sky Shiv is next. Six mana, 4-4 four, four, legendary rogue minion with a battle cry that reads, destroy a minion and all copies of it wherever they are in parentheses. Uh, this card is insane. Like the implications. Yeah, this is kind of Firebat, like the... By the way, too, versus card reveal. That was hilarious. If you if you guys got a chance to watch Firebat's card reveal for this one, it was very good. I am very <laughs> guilty of almost never watching card reveals. Oh, yeah, no, so I just was... look at the sites. <laughs> he did a wonderfully like low budget, you know, funny take on this. It was very good. <laughs> <laughs> this is kind of like the the anti tech for the card we all get, right? I can't remember the name of it now, but the the legendary that we all got. BlizzCon thing. Sathravar? Yes! No, oh, I didn't even <laughs> think about Sathravar. I was thinking like... Yeah, the one that like gives you a billion copies of whatever you want, and he's like, nah, I'll take those. Just murder them. <laughs> yeah. yeah Sathravar. Thanks, chat. Yeah, my first thought was like... Because actually, the first time I saw this, someone posted it in our Discord yesterday and said, does this kill Shervala? And so that was like the first thing that entered my mind. I was like, oh, that's an interesting way to look at it. Although... How often is a second Travala that important in a rogue matchup? Because they're not exactly healing. Um, so I, I don't know about that one as much, but it is certainly a, a way to think about this card. But then I saw people mention Zephyrus, and I'm like, oh, oh my god, if you were like playing Zephyrus in a rogue deck, you could play your own Zephyrus and then flick Sky Shiv it to stop your opponent from being able to play Zephyrus. Right. There's some real shenanigan possibilities here. Think about this back in the day with Shutterwalk when you would get all those Shutterwalks in your hand and they just play infinite Shutterwalks. Like, this would have been such a saving grace. Just kill <laughs> one Shutterwalk and they're all gone. And you've killed them all, yet. yeah. So the entire so populace nice. of Hearthstone that wasn't playing Shamans would have just switched over to Rogue? Is that what you're, you're saying? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Basically, yeah. For those first few days of Witchwood, like, oh, that was the worst <laughs> launch ever. I hated was... it so much but the thing about this card too is like even if you don't destroy multiple copies it's pretty okay like it's you know that vile spine slayer kind of adjacent card mm. it's just killing something and sometimes that's all you need like that little tempo swing just get a four four and wipe their wipe their threat and who cares if you destroy copies or not so it does have crazy tech card potential like that's obvious but it's not punished for being a tech card, which many cards are. They're bad when they don't hit their tech. Like weapon removal when you're not fighting weapons is bad mm -hmm. usually. But this is still good. And I think that like shores up any weaknesses and more or less guarantees that this is the sort of card that's going to get played. Good tech card, but also just a good card. Yeah. Yeah, I feel the same way. And we have some tech cards to talk about today, so. Mm -hmm. This is a, a good standard to judge ever? them against. <laughs> <laughs> Some craziness, y'all. Some craziness yeah. happening in Hearthstone. But uh, before we get there, we have a couple more classes to work through, including uh, Shaman. More like End Warrior today. Uh, but kicking off with Shaman, we've got Cumulo Maximus. I'm going to have to try very hard every single time I say the name of this card to... Uh, <laughs> Not make everyone else on the podcast giggle. Um, it's a five mana, five, five epic shaman elemental with a battle cry that reads, if you have overloaded mana crystals, deal five damage. Yep. Going into my deck. Let's just move right on and talk about Bandersmosh. <laughs> <laughs> like, what do you say about Cumula Maximus other than, holy crap, this is just a good card. Yeah, it's good. I mean, my only hesitation is that it's maybe a little too late game for like, you know, really aggressive overload shaman strategies. Like it kind of costs six mana if you think about it, and that's probably fine still. It's just a lot of damage. It's also good for battle cry decks potentially too. So, Although, quest shaman decks have tended to value much cheaper battle cries because you can slot more of them into a you turn. do more per turn, yeah. Yeah, but I, I agree with you. I think it just a lot of it makes sense. It looks yeah, really I mean, we'll have zap until the standard rotation because that's when Witchwood leaves. But, mm, right, so that, that's the one five mana out for this, yeah. So. Yeah, yeah, and there's only, there will only be two of them, but at least that started maybe, in your deck. Maybe Beakered Lightning or something too, right? But oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But commonly seen. That, that would be bad, usually in... in in a token aggro overload shaman, so <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're gonna go to wild and uh make a new friend for Blaze Caller, Joss or Regis? <laughs> no, Blaze Caller no. would be really good. <laughs> yeah, I, I like this card a lot. Um, 
Uh, Bandersmosh is up next. We've got two legendaries to talk about today. Starting with Bandersmosh. That's a five mana, five, five legendary shaman minion that reads each turn this is in your hand, transform it into a five, five copy of a random legendary minion. For the memes, I guess. Yeah. Right? I don't think so, by the way. No, I'm going to. No? Stand You're going to defend Bandersmosh. Okay, I want to yes. hear this. Whoa, yeah, okay. Because, I mean, I, Shifter, like, nobody plays him ever. <laughs> you're right. But here, I'm going to. Uh, you're right. And, and that was a lot of people's first reaction. But let me. Let me make my case here. I actually gave Banner Smosh five stars. <laughs> and is it just the for the name? <laughs> no, well, the name is good. And the artwork's great, too. But here's the deal, right? So Shifter's Eris is a great comparison. Because the thing about Shifter's Eris is you get a random legendary. And random, or is it not even legendaries, is it? I don't even know. But you get a uh, random no. card. Random cards are bad. Like, random cards obviously aren't good. Even random legendaries are bad, as we see. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, Arsenal random legendaries aren't good either. <laughs> So that, that's that's you get like Blood Mage Salamos, there's no value. You get like, you know, Imris, it's like, oh my god, I, can't, I don't have time to play Imris, right? So random legendaries suck. That's pretty obvious. But the thing Banner Smosh does is that he shores up weaknesses in both directions. So if you have a card with a reasonably good effect but low stats, think like Blood Mage Thalnos or maybe like Crystal Smith Kangor. Like, you wouldn't be excited to get a Crystal Smith Kangor in your deck, but a 5-5 five, five Crystal Smith Kangor, it's like, well, okay, you know, that's actually not maybe. too bad. Like, maybe, yeah, it's Divine Shield, it's a 5-5, five, five, it's got Lifesteal. It's like, okay, I can play that. Like, that's a good enough card to put in a deck. And then alternatively, you get a card like Imris that's normally way too slow with a very positive effect. It's not slow anymore. It's five mana now. So, you get to so it does, it keeps the mana cost too then, because that was the next the question, cost. is yeah, it yeah, does, there's, okay, because yeah, then, a video so that's a little bit cost. different, because I was so, thinking that it it just was a 5-5 five, five copy of a legendary, so sometimes you'd get a 5-5 five, five Thalnos for two, sometimes you'd get, you know, a 5-5 five, five big huge dragon, and we've got so many of them now, like, right, <laughs> that would be right. terrible, I don't want a 5-5 no, five, five that costs me eight or nine still. If it costs its full cost, it wouldn't be good. I'd agree with that. Yeah, but it, okay. It keeps the so, five but it mana keeps cost. the cost. So okay, that changes so sometimes things. you'll get a five mana Imris. And like, oh, okay, God, that's actually insane. I'm going to double all my stats for five mana. That's crazy, particularly in, in some decks. So it, it basically it, it levels out bad stats and it levels out high costs. And it kind of brings in those two downsides to where everything is kind of meeting in the middle. And what that means is... If you look at the range of legendaries in Hearthstone right now, there's some just absurd high rolls. Like Kyrie gives you a full board of five fives for five mana. It's like uh, an end game um, uh, panda dude whose name just escaped my brain. Um, what's Nomi? The panda dude? Nomi, yes, Chef Nomi. It's like a five five Chef Nomi on turn five with no condition, right? And then sometimes it's like a five mana Emrys. And um, that those are the high rolls obviously you're not going to hit those every time but occasionally they'll line up and then other times it's just like you know the five five uh crystal smith kangor so some people have done some math i did some math i think roughly about like 60 percent of the rolls are going to be solid like cards that are going to have some upside think like hound master shaw like it's not amazing yeah. but it's good right five five shaw you'd still probably play that in a lot of decks mm -hmm. And then, you know, probably like 10 to 15% are going to suck. They're still Millhouse Mana Storms and maybe Lore Walker Chose. <laughs> Although, frankly, Lore Walker Chose a 5-5 five is maybe not that bad. And then, and, and you know, Duskfall and Aviana, I guess, is another one that's pretty bad. Mm. But then there's like maybe 10 or 15% just crazy high rolls. Like 5-5 five, five Ysera is not, maybe not bad. 5-5 five, five Emrys, 5-5 five, five Hyreek. Um, I don't know. Tyrion's probably pretty good for five mana as a five five, right? Like, <laughs> Gee, uh, Tyrion so, for five mana is probably kind of maybe good. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And here's the thing about Shaman too, I think, is that Shaman is a class that can typically hold on to cards for a while because they have such a diversity of options. Like the, like particularly Battlecry Shaman, they've got like 10 things in hand constantly. So if you hit a bad roll on Bandersmosh, I think you could probably just wait a turn or two until it lines up and then try to hit that big moment. And the same thing can be said for Control Shaman decks, too, because they generally get a ton of spells from Hagatha and all these things. So it's not like you're feeling urgent to play it. So even if you mm. top deck it or if you're on a bad roll, just wait a turn or two, and then you find something crazy, and it works out for you. So maybe that's yeah, a little if you bit think about helpful. seventy, If you think about, like, 70 to 75% of the time, you're getting something playable. And only right. like 15-ish, maybe 20, up to 20% of the time you're getting something like truly awful, horrible that you have to wait a turn. Right. Might not actually be that bad. Right, exactly. So it's a good card most of the time. It's a great just instant game winner occasionally. And stealing games in Hearthstone really helps. 
really <laughs> bolsters the win rate as we've seen with Evolve. <laughs> so anyway, I, I'm I'm pretty hopeful on it. Like there's still gonna be some decks that it doesn't make sense for, you know, maybe Battle Cry Shamans have to have more Battle Cries, they can't run it. But I I have some some dreams for Banner Smosh that he's more than a meme, <laughs> basically. <laughs> I hope that analysis made any kind of sense. But no, no, it really did because I, I wasn't the. I thought that the mana cost would change as well, so mm. that's why I was thinking, no, this is way too terrible. But if the like, if you know your what your mana cost is going to be and your health and attack on your minion, and you're just waiting to see what that text is going to turn into, essentially, then yeah, I exactly. think that makes this a lot more, um, a lot more consistent, which is what you need in something like you need a little bit of consistency in your randomness. Otherwise, you know, it's just it's terrible. It's too right, this, this high, like low rolling all the edges. Yeah, yeah, this, yeah, yeah. Yeah. If anything, uh, that explanation just now instills fear. Because <laughs> of all the bander smooshing shamans, <laughs> right? Because if this then becomes a meta card, uh, the chances of us running into high roll bander smashes increases greatly. If, uh, right. if this becomes, I hope a, I didn't bring doom upon us. Regular yeah. inclusion in shamans, but no, <laughs> this you make, is evolved hair all over again, Regis. Why where, do you have to tell people about these things? <laughs> yeah, where my brain yeah. definitely failed was I was not considering the added stats on you know lower. Mm, Slower costed legendaries. legendaries. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You're you really you, you had me at Crystal Smith Kangor. Mm. <laughs> I was just thinking of like, yeah, yeah. If I get a high roll, that'd be rad. But there's just so many kind of dead legendaries. But I hadn't. Yeah, I thought of it like a five five Thalnos. Sure, why not? Give it to me. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you wouldn't be excited about it, but you could play it and not feel bad. Yeah, You'd yeah. Like, oh, still, okay, sure. Yeah, and that's where randomly, you know, random generators in Hearthstone find homes. Is, is mm -hmm. when their their average outcome is solid, right? So. so if you play this in a deck with a Shutterwalk and you end up with a Battlecry Legendary, then because you've played that Legendary, that Battlecry would also go in that pool. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. So like Dragon Queen Alexstrasza or something, if you happen mm -hmm. to be a Highlander at that stage, could pull into your Shutterwalk pool and you could get two zero cost dragons out of your yeah. for Shutterwalks, et cetera, et cetera, right? Like, yeah, there's a lot of pretty fun, crazy scenarios here. I'm totally going to play Shutterwalk with this on day one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, glad, I'm glad I turned you. Yeah, they even have art that matches. I mean, if nothing else, yes, just aesthetically. Right. <laughs> and their names both are derived from like the same poem or whatever. Yeah. I think it's right. something like that, at least. Yeah, yep. the Jabberwocky and the Bandersnatch. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, there you go. Uh, well, Nithog is the final shaman card to talk about today. It's a six mana five five legendary shaman dragon with a battle cry that reads: Summon two zero three eggs. Next turn, they hatch into four four drakes with rush. And I did actually watch the video on this one, so I know that that egg does not have a death rattle on it. Which, which I did not, and I thought it did, and I was like, mm. "Oh, this card's not bad." But when I realized it didn't have death rattle, I was like, "Oh, this card, I think I would, this card sucks." <laughs> I would be in love with this card if the eggs had a death rattle, but they don't. So yeah, I'm with you. I do not think this is a good card. I just assumed it because, frankly, I thought the card would be too bad if they didn't have death rattle. <laughs> so I just made an <laughs> assumption that it had yeah. to. Well, it's also I, I just, just don't think it makes sense. The majority know. of eggs. In Hearth in Hearthstone, behave that way, and definitely like right. What if we had like one egg? I think that dealt damage to itself and summoned a whelp back in Blackrock Mountain. I think that was like the mm -hmm. only egg that wasn't just a when this dies spawn thing, right? So yeah, like the language of Hearthstone. When I see egg, I immediately just assume death rattle. Um, but yeah, yeah. no, it's it's a lightning bolt. <laughs> well, you could still have the lightning bolt and have a death rattle, but the, yeah, they, they didn't. Mm. It's just lightning bolt. Uh, and also someone somewhere posted the card of the egg. I didn't find it until after I did my graphics for the day, so I don't have it up for the stream, but yeah, the, the, the egg token itself has, has, has no death rattle. It just reads at the start of your turn, transform into a four, four storm Drake with rush. So, uh, which uh, the reward on this is like, not even that good anymore in Hearthstone, like four, four is with rush. It's like, oh, okay, it's restless mummy or like, you know, the Druid quest, the Oasis Surgers are like better than that. It's like, yeah, it's got a five, five, but you're spending the six mana on three units here. And it's like, I don't think they're that, like, even if it works, it's not that great of a six mana play. It's solid. It's definitely better than, you know, um, some of the other six mana rush stuff we have like unleash and in, in Hunter, but it's delayed. Like your opponent gets all the ability to, to react to it. If you're behind, it's just the eggs die and you play the six mana five, five. 
kind of synergizes with shutter walk, but only barely. Mm -hmm. It's just so awkward feeling. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, it's going to, it could eat up attacks. It could eat up removal from your opponent, but like, I, 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 that's not enough right now in Hearthstone. I definitely don't think it's going to be enough post dragon's release. Right. right. So, um, yeah, not feeling Nithog, which is a shame because, um, there's some rad dragon art in this set. This is a cool looking card. That is a badass looking storm dragon. Mm -hmm. I like it. He was a pretty badass wow character too. <laughs> I don't remember Nithog. From Legion. Is the one we yeah, were riding around Legion. on a he was a, He's a yeah. world boss, right? Like, uh, I think you, you probably fought him if you played Legion. Mm -hmm. he's probably a did. world I, boss in that one zone. Stormheim just, or something like that? Stormheim, yeah. Up in, up in the top of the mountain, yeah. Yeah. Love that zone. That it was... <laughs> Northrend as hell, even though it wasn't a Northrend. Uh, yeah. So, anyways. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, anyway, yeah, I don't. Yeah. Since without the death rattle, you're right. It's ugh, your opponent has everything to do with this card, and you don't have a whole lot of agency here. And then, even when you get the four fours, it's like if it was a death rattle and they killed your eggs, then that was basically like having four fours with charge, right? Because then you get to use them next turn. Like this is just rush. Just ah, I don't know. Meh. <laughs> <laughs> Well, well said. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, let's move on to <laughs> Warlock. Really? Uh, let's move on to Warlock and talk about uh, Abyssal Summoner, a six mana 2-2 two, two common Warlock minion with a battle cry that reads, Summon a demon with taunt and stats equal to your hand size. I think we kind of have to talk about Valdris first, right? The fact that the, your hand size might not be 10. The <laughs> seven mana four, four legendary warlock minion with a battle cry that reads, increase your maximum hand size to 12, draw four cards and upgrade your phone to a bigger screen. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. That one. Yeah, Blizzard even said they wanted to do, I think it was like 14 or 15, but they could oh. Like they originally designed him to go to like 14 or 15, but could you imagine much. the tiny sliver of difference between spacing on the fan of cards on a phone? If it was <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like 15, that would be insane. Um, mm -hmm. So yes, cheesy Bob. Yeah. Valdris is, you can look at Valdris as sprint with a body, although we were usually prepping it as sprint. So it's, mm -hmm. you know, uh, but yeah. So abyssal summoner is a two, two for six that summons a demon with taunt. With, and stats equal to your hand size, and then Valdris uh, is can yeah. potentially increase or refill your hand. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean that's like perfect case scenario. Uh, but like, I mean, I think if you're even considering a Vistal Summoner, I think you're looking at a hand lock type strategy because Valdris mm -hmm. is a one of. It's a legendary. It's not guaranteed to start in your hand or anything crazy like that. Um, and I'm, also, if your if your strategy is to summon a twelve twelve taunt, I'm not sure it's game winning level. But um, well, how did we to... get here? <laughs> a 12-12 yeah, taunt point. on six is well, we, game we've winning. Had, <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, that's been the case since the beginning, right? Like we've had Hex and Polymorph and Assassinate and like single card answers to giant threats since Hearthstone well, here, hit. Here's the thing. It has been game winning in the past with Spiteful Summoner, but that's because mm -hmm. it followed a chain of pressure throughout the early to mid game that people by the time they got to the spiteful summoner, they just couldn't keep up. Like they're like, oh, mm -hmm. screw it. I'm out. I'm out of removal. I'm done. <laughs> and it would be that final, that final chunk that, that killed them. I don't know that warlock can achieve that in a hand lock build that rewards this. So you're adding a condition basically to the spiteful summoner that demands a resource game as opposed to a tempo game. So you haven't been creating that pressure that a spiteful deck would have created. So by the time you get to the abyssal summoner, it's like your opponent still has the resources. They still have the time. They're not at five health, right? So I, I do agree that this is not a game-winning play at that stage, unlike a Spiteful Summoner deck, just because of the path you've taken to get there. That said, if a handlock can just make enough big threats over time, if they're playing Mountain Giants and I was going to say, yeah, if they're playing 8-8s eight leading into this, then... Right, then they might still be able to get to those breakpoints where the opponent's just like, God, I just hexed two Twilight, or two, um, you know, Mountain Giants, and now you've summoned another 9-9. Nine, nine. Like, I just, what do I do, right? <laughs> so I'm a little bit hopeful for it. It's it's another one of those, it's kind of like duh with dragons, but it's like duh if handlock works, right? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it, uh, I always I liked handlock. I like the play style, so I'm I'm glad that they're getting some more or some updated tools. I guess is is the best way to to look at it. I just hope the meta allows for it because warlock has now been as as much as I was like, grr, cute warlock, banish all warlocks to the pits of hell, and I hate them and never play them again in Hearthstone. 
die. Um, oh, sorry, I, really I, I think it's, <laughs> yeah, it's been long enough now that I feel like I think Warlock's been at the bottom and I'm okay with them having a bit of a resurgence now. So yeah, I, I hope that this is the way that they do it. But yeah, Q blocks can die. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The timing was perfect. <laughs> yeah, I, um, I really like both these cards and I hope that Handlock uh, has a resurgence because I too really enjoyed that archetype. Mm -hmm. um, and I just have had, I haven't really been feeling Warlock for a while now. Um, I, 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 no one has. <laughs> I've played a lot of Zulok. I'm kind of over it and I haven't been too much into the other weird uh, kind of Warlock decks that have been popping up and instead I, I wouldn't mind going back to kind of a new spin on a classic archetype. So I'm definitely here for Handlock if it finds a way. Uh, so hopefully it does. Yeah, so me too. Insert your Jurassic Park reference here. I was going to say, yeah, we'll just get Jeff Goldblum in here and we'll do a quick Handlock finds a way. <laughs> Please do. Jeff Goldblum has a new TV show. Maybe he'll do he it does, yeah. as a topic. <laughs> 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 My favorite kind of guest, like good analysis and tons of useless pop culture knowledge like myself. <laughs> oh, that's great. Uh, Zeraku, the warped is how I'm going to choose to pronounce that until I'm corrected. Uh, is an eight mana 412 legendary warlock dragon that reads whenever your hero takes damage, summon a 6-6 six, six, nether drake. Sticking with the nether drake theme for warlocks. Uh, makes sense. Um, so it's a warlock. So this doesn't ask too much of you. It's pretty easy for your hero to take damage on purpose uh, because of your hero power. Um, and it's also important to remember the final Galakron form for everyone that gets a Galakron that equips a 5-2 weapon. So if you're worried about losing your hero power with Galakron, if you've invoked four times, you can still cause damage to yourself through weapon swings and have a little more agency in that regard as well. Uh other than that, um, I yeah. would say one distinction a lot of people miss on this card is the damage doesn't have to be on your turn. It can be on anybody's mm. turn, which is a, a bit of a shift. Typically, we've seen these cards. It's your turn specifically. So yeah. if you play this and you don't damage yourself, but your opponent's like, hey, I'm going to hit him in the face four times, you get four, six, six drakes. So this has a kind of like if they're not ending the game, a soft taunt aspect where it's like they kind of have to react to this. Unless they have lethal, they're just going to kill you. They'll kill you, of course. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. <laughs> otherwise, I'll take it's like, well, the lethal. Okay, I, can't, I can't really give him two six sixes, but it's that sort of risk reward that's always inherent to Warlock. It's like, how much life can I lose to gain some advantage? Mm -hmm. I actually think this card's still a little bit too slow. If it had taunt, it would be, you know, um, interesting because it would force the action, but it would also be less fun from a design because it couldn't hit you in the face as easily. So yeah. I, it just feels a little awkward, and I don't think it's quite going to get there. But it would be really fun to play. I'll try it. Yeah, this is one of those cards that, like, I really like it, and I think it's cool, and I want to try and make it work, but I'm, I'm with you where I'm like, it's it's slow. Uh, or, or is it because it's a card that can discount dragons in your deck by two? But even then... <laughs> There's, I think, much more threatening dragons uh, kind of across the board throughout this whole expansion that also could potentially be discounted by two. So. <laughs> I'm just, like, you just, like, you sent shivers down my spine just now. Like, oh, my God, yeah, what are we entering still, into? Uh, still haven't like, made it to neutrals. <laughs> what is this? Oh, okay. you, yeah, because, like, I made a note I didn't even get to say. Like, I think with Zerika the Warp, the question is, are you going to die on nine? Or possibly, are you going to die on seven? Is the question you ask yourself before you play this card. Uh, yeah. But it's, um, yeah, it's a, it's a slow dragon for sure. And uh, I don't know. I don't know about this one. It, it, again, though, like if Handlock takes off, like that is traditionally a, a slow archetype that finds ways to, to kind of get there. So maybe it has room. But they've been tapping a lot too, so their health is low, so there's less time That's to play true. this. Like, yeah. There's always risk reward with Warlock, which is what makes it fun, I think. That's why Handlock's so enjoyable. It's like, uh, ooh, can I tap or not? Like, ooh, I don't know. They're I hoping need to, but <laughs> I, they're banking on all of us thinking Malganus is in standard because we've all been in, in freaking Battlegrounds <laughs> La La Land for a month. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's that's what they're doing. They're trying to trick us. Trying to trick us. We have memories, they function. We won't get into that trap. But let's uh let's move on to Warrior. Um, I, I'm actually excited to talk about neutrals this week. I'm usually, I feel like most expansions, <laughs> I'm just like, yeah, neutrals, it's fine. But 
Um, Warrior, we're starting off with Evil Quartermaster, a three mana, two, three uh, common warrior minion with a battle cry that reads, add a lackey to your hand, gain three armor. So um, I like lackeys. Lots of stuff. <laughs> yeah, I like lackeys a lot. Uh, Warrior has kind of struggled with lackey generation ever since lackeys have been introduced to Hearthstone. So in, in that regard, like, I don't know. I, I like it because lackey, but like I'm not over the moon with evil quartermaster. Um, so two, three for three, three armor. I don't know. And I, it, it, I'm also kind of into my but lackeys. Oh, is... Like lackeys are really good though, and even like the new one that they added to the pool doesn't dilute the pool. <laughs> one mana, one one, discover a dragon. Mm -hmm. That's really good too. So it's like no matter what lackey I get, except for maybe Titanic lackey, but even then sometimes those are situation situationally good. So like lackeys are just super powerful. They do way more than they're supposed to for their one mana cost. So I actually think this is okay. <laughs> like lackey generation on a half decent minion with also an armor upside. Sure. And not only that, I think lackeys are actually shifting more mid to control oriented with draconic lackey because dragons are going to be usually more defensive or more bigger yeah minions. so on on average you're going to get more value return from your lackey and, and this card does seem to be oriented towards a slower game plan given its armor and, and lower stats so if anything the lackey pool is is fitting this card better now and it probably wouldn't have an expansion or two ago this would have felt sort of at odds with itself so yeah i, I kind of agree with you another good maybe just speed bump Three drop feels, feels solid. So this is a card that you would say is fair, but also has potential to actually see inclusion in a, in a deck list. Yeah. Now that you put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> now that you use that. No, no, I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not throwing shade. I mean, like I think it's, it's literally <laughs> sitting next to Scion of Ruin. Yeah. And it's like, well, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I don't. But yeah. I think fair is a good way to put it. Maybe a little better than fair, but. We'll see. It's it's we'll yeah see. yeah. I've, I've been I I feel like my opinion on Evil Quartermaster changes about every hour if you ask me. Like kind of depends <laughs> on my mood I'm, because it's like I want to like it because I love Lackey Generation, uh, and I don't think the card is like outright bad. It's just that it's like ah, it seems the seem about the seems balanced, and usually when I say that, the card doesn't end up seeing play. But <laughs> that's fair. Yeah, but uh, speaking of Scion of Ruin. Uh, which is uh, not just what happened to my wife's last car. Uh, it's uh, three men. No one, uh, there's one wow. car person out wow. there laughing about the poor long lost wow. Toyota subbrand. Uh, Scion of Rune is a three mana, three, two. Epic. I, kept, I keep thinking this is legendary, by the way. This is an epic warrior dragon. The art looks legendary. It looks insane. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really cool. Yeah, it's an uh, epic warrior dragon with rush and battle cry. If you've invoked twice, summon two copies of this. So if you have invoked twice, meaning you're, I would hope, are playing a Galakron deck, because if you're not, I'm, I mean, maybe you're just really excited about Scion of Ruin, but uh, you're going to get three three twos with Rush on the board. Also, it says copies of this. So are you playing that Galakron deck? Do you remember what the Galakron does for the warrior? It draws minions, and it gives them a plus four, plus four buff. And you draw more minions, the more upgraded or the more invoked your Galakron is. So it's not unrealistic to find yourself in a situation. Obviously, it would be late game where you might draw yourself a Scion of Ruin that suddenly has a 4-4 buff on it, and you can summon three of these things. It's crazy. I think you yeah, might be muted, Regis. Oh. Oh, no, no he's good. <laughs> I thought I saw you say oh, something. I Oh, I said it's crazy, yeah. Um, I For the record, I think you could almost play this, by the way, in a non-Galakron deck. It's just a 3-2 Rush minion, and it's got Dragon Synergy. So if you had a mm. Dragon deck that needed an early tempo play, like this may not be that bad, which says a lot, because when it is in an Invoke deck, it just goes nuts. Like, it's on a whole other level. I The one thing about Invoke Galakron, uh, certainly the Balakron Galakron, that's nuts. Seven sixes is crazy, but... It, I think the Galakrond hero power does lend itself towards a slightly more aggressive game plan because it's like three mm -hmm. damage and it's probably going to be face attacks and the claw does the same sort of thing. And I, I, this does feel a little bit more like a reactive card because it has rush, but nonetheless in an aggro deck summoning three bodies that are this aggressive 
would still be good. So it just kind of makes sense across the board. I think it just looks strong. Yeah. That's kind of where my, I, I had a very similar line of like, well, Galakron seems aggressive because of the hero power. So on and so forth. Like, well, who cares? You're getting three of these things. Like exactly, mm-hmm. you might actually run out of targets to rush these into. <laughs> Yeah, for real. <laughs> that's a real con- that is that my concern with this card then cool um yeah scion of ruin really high up there for me this is this this card seems crazy to me and we don't even know what the warrior invoke card's gonna look like right like we don't know no. if it's gonna be some like mid to late thing if it's gonna be something you're gonna do super early on like i feel like this card can only get better. <laughs> there are five cards for warriors still to be revealed, and we haven't seen a single warrior specific invoke card yet. Mm-hmm. I'm sure it's probably going to, because I think the reveal stream is tomorrow. So I'm sure that they're going to build like a Galakrond warrior deck and we'll kind of fill in all those blanks. So, but I'm excited. This yeah, seems really good. It's a reveal stream. <laughs> so we'll probably have some like meme cards in there too. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> a little bit of a great assault, but um, yeah. And then uh, let's talk about my favorite name. Uh, my card. That, this card wins my favorite name of the set. Ankar. You didn't. You didn't pronounce that right. It's Ankar. <laughs> <laughs> the first. Yeah. First time I saw this card and I read it, I read it. Read it as like Char. Because I'm like, yeah, it's and, dragons. And they, char? Things get charred. And char. <laughs> yeah. And then I, I read what it did, and I'm like, oh, it's definitely R. Because it's a three mana, two attack, three durability, legendary warrior weapon that reads, after your hero attacks, draw a pirate from your deck. So, yeah. <laughs> the, Wild the, pirate warrior is going to be fun. <laughs> God, yeah, yes, it is. Oh, I didn't even think about the wild implications. You're absolutely right. But, um, <laughs> I like this so much and I wonder if I'm running away with my excitement because I'm like, I don't even think this, it matters if pirate is a thing. Cause I think just a few pirates might be good enough to run this because if you put like two Corsairs and a green skin in, that's already pretty awesome. Cause you'll eventually draw them all and the green skin will even give you an extra attack and durability for your trouble. Sounds like a Hearthstone sitcom, two Corsairs and a green skin. Come to ABC this fall. Yeah. <laughs> Of course, it's on ABC. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, I, I like the card, too. I mean, the, the one cool thing is, like, in Pirate Warriors, you always have this risk of drawing all your weapons and no minions. That's really, really challenging. And this fixes that problem, because if you get a weapon, you're getting minions, Both. too. <laughs> yeah. So you, you kind of shore up that weakness a little bit, so you never risk just wasting all your durability right like because you can only play one weapon or attack once per turn so durability is wasteful and you have four or five weapons in hand now that said this does have three durability so it's take a while to roll off this but it doesn't matter because you're getting a minion anyway so you're going to be able to play something next turn you don't have to play a weapon follow-up so it just looks good makes sense yep and uh, you know we didn't we didn't talk that much about armor generation here with Warrior outside of the evil quartermaster, but we're gonna have a big armor generation conversation right now because we're moving into neutrals, which means it is time to talk about plate breaker, a five mana five five common neutral minion with a battle cry that reads destroy your opponent's armor. Not a certain Period. amount. No. Just full <laughs> stop. All the armor. Bye bye. Or in other words, destroy your opponent's soul. Yeah, like, (laughs) oh, man. This was, I. I, we were talking, I I think it was a couple months ago now, about just armor in general and how it would be really nice if, I think it was a listener email who wrote in and was asking if they should do something about interacting with armor or around armor. And I, I feel like there were some more subtle, interesting ways to go about this. This feels a little bit ham-fisted in your face like just you're like armor fine destroy it whatever let's go (laughs) just like oh man but you know attacking around armor or giving a minion a tag that said like ignores armor or something like that would have been so cool but this just seems like tech hate just off the charts like i mean it's exactly it it doesn't get any better but it doesn't have to get any better because your opponent has sunk so many resources potentially into creating armor and you're just like "Eh, nope and i get a five five what's up (laughs) (laughs) like it seems so terrible like from a from like a feeling perspective of being on the receiving end of this 
I'm just kind of perplexed as to like the timing, honestly, because mm. like I feel like we're we're finding ways to win games against armor generating warriors. It's fine right now. Like it's not. So yeah, I, this I, I don't know. I feel warrior meta for sure, or like crazy druid ridiculousness that we had, you know, yeah. kind of a year ago. But I'm not feeling the hype around this card. Like, like, like the uh, I feel like the internet is because everyone's like, oh my god, like it is. It is a big thing because it's something we've been mm -hmm. asking for a while. Is like some sort of armor hate, but and this is the ultimate armor hate. It's just that like I don't know that I care. I don't think I want to put a five five that does nothing against no armor into my deck. I like, this is why I typically am not the biggest fan of these type of hate cards. I didn't, I wasn't a big fan of the crab back in the day and I'm not a big fan of this. Like, cause there's in, in, in for us, us at home playing Hearthstone, we're essentially playing a best of one against a random opponent. And we don't know what class it's going to be. You know, if there was a mode where I could go in and play a best of series and there was sideboarding or anything of that sort, I would find tech cards a little more interesting, but this, uh, for me as the deck builder, I see it as a risk. And I always have for those types of cards, with the exception of Crab and Hunter back in the day, because it was a beast, so it didn't mm. really matter if you <laughs> didn't have things to eat with your crab. But that's a edge case scenario. Mm -hmm. Well, I think this is this is more so maybe not ladder impacting, but I think definitely tournament impacting. Like Warrior has been a staple for a really long time now, and most of the time it's been something along the lines of a control type variant like we haven't seen a lot of aggro warrior make its way into tournaments lately so i feel like this very much is like i just put this in my decks and then warriors never an issue <laughs> yeah also combo it. decks that need a reliable amount of burst mm -hmm. damage they have a specific number to target i think you can i think you can toss this in as a one of tech just even on ladder just to give you that matchup short up like holy wrath paladin or whatever mm -hmm. the warrior gets to 52 oh i lose it's like no longer you've got the, <laughs> or the plate breaker so i i think it has some playability but you guys all said very smart things there i agree with you i say i will say from a timing standpoint i wonder if this is to fix the wild line cracker bees earthen scales druid that gets like 2500 armor because mm. bees came out last set and then like it's pretty rare it's like a super common deck but it does get run even high on like um, you know, ranked ladder in wild format. And it's like the most frustrating in the world thing in the world to play against. So maybe just for players who feel helpless to give them a cheap tech answer to that, mm. just for a feel good for, for, you know, more casual players, perhaps. Yeah. yeah and poor Paladin thinks uh, Lodvar in the chat room is mentioning that the Paladin legendary that converts your health to armor. Oh, the call, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The call. Yeah. He's just, no one's ever going to play him again. It's just, bye bye. I'm not taking that risk. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, he, he had a very very narrow window of time <laughs> he got a one health and he's just like whoops <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh thek all means f all now that's, yeah yeah that's what that is oh, yep. Yep. fancy keeping a pg-13 keeping a pg-13 <laughs> um yeah but this is um i i get the reaction and i am still grumpy about hate cards hasn't changed with plate breaker so um we'll see <laughs> you're going to see this in some decks for sure. Um, Bad Luck Albatross is next. The three mana four, three, I almost said five, sorry. I looked over Cobalt's Falcon for a second. The four, uh, three mana four, three rare neutral beast with the death rattle that reads shuffle two, one, one Albatross into your opponent's deck. Uh, <laughs> I love, Screw you, Highlander. <laughs> I love the theme of this card so much. Uh, yeah. just the goofy seagull that puts a bunch of albatrosses into your deck and God help you rogues out there if you're uh, trying to pull off something really, really clever with your stowaway. <laughs> you might end up getting some some seagulls. <laughs> That's so good, though. I feel like I wouldn't even be mad. Like, if somebody played this against me and then I was trying to do fancy things and I pulled out an albatross, I'd just be like, all right, GG. And talk you to know, me one when... mana one ones aren't that bad in Rogue with, like, Edward. Yeah. Actually, so that's a good point. <laughs> like, you might not be that mad. Oh, thanks for the combo combo activators. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my lord. Um yeah. But probably some edge case scenario uses for this bad luck al albatross. Uh, uh, anyone want to go to bat for a albatross archetype? I think it's a fine card that, you know, beast deck like honor can maybe toss one in, death rattle synergy stuff. It is rather disruptive to put bad things in your opponent's deck. The problem is it's only two, so it's like, when are they actually going to hit this? The game may be over before that matters. 
But if you value Death Rattle Synergies or Beasts anyway, the stat line's not bad at all. So it's got some possibility. Yeah. Uh, let's move on to Cobalt Spellkin. Uh, it's five mana, three, five, rare neutral dragon with a battle cry that reads, add two one-cost spells from your class to your hand. So some or spell low-cost. Oh, side quest, yeah. <laughs> Oh man, can you imagine getting side quests from this and then you don't have the thing you need to do? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, brutal. <laughs> yeah. There are though some classes with really good like one mana spells like Mage comes to mind <clears throat> in a tempo deck. They have all kinds of, you know, Sorcerer's Apprentice mana cycle and stuff. So yeah. toss mm -hmm. it in there, get some extra one one drops. But it's kind of slow for that deck too, like five mana. It's like, uh, we need to be doing stuff already. So it's it's got some challenges, but also some upside. Mm -hmm. And it is those, technically a dragon, right? Generation. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So maybe if you have dragon surgery pieces for mage, toss this in. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe Ma warrior Ma with shield slams, that sort of thing. Yeah. Mage, warrior, maybe even shaman a little bit. Maybe they'll pick up a lightning bolt or you know, some other ways to interact with the board. But yeah. Yeah. You could use this in a Malagos shaman to get extra frost shocks and lightning bolts for extra burst damage. Boom. Let's go. Day one deck. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait. Yeah. I mostly look at this card as kind of like a budget dragon. You know, if you're, if you don't have a lot of cards, but you're trying to make a dragon work. You know, here's one you may have found with sure. a, with a somewhat interesting effect tacked onto it. Uh, let's talk about dragon breeder. Uh, I know it's mostly an audio show folks, but sometimes I just love the art of a card and I just want to point it out. Dragon breeder has amazing art. This dude loves his yeah. little dragon baby. Uh, it's a two mana, two, three rare neutral minion with a battle cry that reads, choose a friendly dragon, add a copy of it to your hand. Yeah. Okay. I like this. I like this in a, in a dragon deck. Zola the dragon. Mm -hmm. it's, it's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> it's, no, I think it's great. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I'm all for this. This makes a lot of sense in a dragon expansion. Oh yeah, definitely. And I think it's it's kind of uh, maybe Highlander specific because you're looking for cards to fill out those decks sometimes. But I think yeah, if you've got dragons, then you're probably gonna be using this guy because I mean even even if you have to drop him on turn two, he's still a two mana two three, which is not terrible. And then. Unlike other like two drops and stuff we've seen in the past, like, um, oh, what's the one that I hate that goes with quests and draws you a card, but then once you finished it, it's useless? Questing I, I, Explorer? Questing, yeah, yeah, yeah. I hate that card. So, because it gets so bad, like the further on in the game you get, it gets worse and worse and worse. This is kind of the opposite. Like you can play it on two and then it's a two, three on two. Not terrible. But the longer the game goes and you top deck this, you don't necessarily feel bad for top decking a two drop on like your 10th turn because you can be like, Oh, Hey, my dragons are on board. Let's get another one. All right, let's go. Like it's, I think it just gets better as time goes on. And I, I like that. I like this card a lot. I, I feel trapped into agreeing with you, even though I like questing explorer a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I know, that's like the one card we could never agree on. Oh, go to my grave. I will go to my grave fighting for questing explorer. Jocelyn and the meta agrees with me because it's in decks. <sighs> But um, I actually, I'm on her side on that one. I, 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 yes! I know the I know the data's there, so my I'm I'm torn in two because it's like, man, it seems good, but I hate it. I hate it so much. Listen, I hate drawn at late game as much as anyone else. It's just that I'm just like, it is worth the risk. That is my argument. It's worth the risk. Um, but yeah, yeah, but yeah, this is better. Everything you just said, yeah, 100 percent. Dragon breeder, uh, a little. Absolutely, I think it would be a stellar card in Dragon Dex. So let's move on and talk about uh, Death Charge, which for some reason is not the order in my notes as I put on the visuals. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. I if, if I didn't call it out, no one would have said a damn thing. It's a one mana, zero five, rare neutral minion. Uh, rare neutral barrel is really what I want to call it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, at the start of your turn, deal five damage to all minions. So not and quite a doomsayer. Yeah, and why are we depth charging in an expansion about flying? Did you see how many <laughs> flying boats there were in the air for this? This is Warcraft, they're Jocelyn. They're in the air. <laughs> yeah, but there are boats in the air, and boats drop depth charges. But there's nothing in the water. I don't know why this is pirates, because there's boats. <laughs> and also, this depth charge is not underwater. It is clearly plummeting through the air. 
<laughs> and, and you guys were worried about going long today. Just yeah, <laughs> <sorry. we're> at, <laughs> two hours in or something. We're, <laughs> yep. we're talking yeah. about the the logistics <laughs> of, a, of a barrel. Yeah, in a, in a pirate sh- airship. Regis, would you like to hit us? The doomsday is uh, probably just better, and we can move on to chromatic egg. <laughs> yeah, I think that's right. I think that's exactly right. I mean, maybe you, you run three doomsayers, you toss one of these in or something, but I think most of the time doomsayers is better. There is like some weird maybe priest synergies, like priest quest where you like start healing this and buffing it every turn, and it's like a constant removal tool your opponent can never escape from. But if you've gotten to that point in a quest priest already, probably winning. You've probably regardless. just won. Yeah. So, <laughs> who cares? Yeah. Like, <laughs> so yeah, I, I, I don't like that charge too much. Yep. Uh, Chromatic Egg is next, a uh, five mana zero three epic neutral minion with a battle cry that reads secretly discover a dragon to hatch into death rattle hatch is an exclamation point. <laughs> Had to make up for the anchor. Uh, there you go. Uh, I, I love this. I think this is such a supremely cool card. Uh, I, I'm on the fence about it being good or not because it's at five mana. And it doesn't have any kind of like tribe to it. It's not quite the same as like the mech egg for Paladin because you could, you know, stick stuff onto that. And then all of a sudden it can attack. It's a threat. It might have taunt a divine shield or whatever. Like this just is the egg. <laughs> and so there's not really too much you can kind of do with it. You can't force it to to pop. You have to kind of wait for your opponent to do that. So I don't really know if this is good. I think it's probably just fun and i really want to throw it into a wild deck with bran and play dead in a hunter because then you just get to, to get two dragons and then death rattle them a billion times and you know i think maybe that's where you can find some fun but i don't know if this is good to be just in standard i yeah that goes my sentiments exactly yeah i think you nailed it yep uh all the stars for awesomeness uh, not so many for uh, standard playability Dread Raven, as I move the slides along, is next. It's a three mana, three, four epic neutral beast and has plus three attack for each other Dread Raven you control. It's also probably my favorite mount I've paid money for in World of Warcraft. <laughs> yeah, this one's kind of meh. I mean, it has the same sort of feel as Obelisk, right? But that never took off and that at least had a way to like OTK stuff. And I, yeah, this is just... You still have to wait a turn, even if you get a whole bunch of beasts and like, yeah, they're going to have, they might be like six fours, but yeah, I don't know. Yeah, there's a weird world with um, discounting this and Hunter via the, I don't know, I think it's a spider of some sort, the six mana five, five that discounts a beast. Oh yeah, that and then discounts them by five or whatever. Yeah, yeah you, you hunting party, the zero mana version, you hunting party, the zero mana version again for four of them. Then you play Zul'jin and you get up to seven. You have a Tundra Rhino, whatever. You, you know, you can <laughs> There's maybe Rhino a way to charge them in Hunter. <laughs> six of these. So I think that's a meme. Like I, I did that exact same combo with King Crush already, and it was cool and fun, but I don't think particularly good. So, I mean, keep an eye on it, I guess, but I, I think mostly meme and and will be too difficult to pull off. And Hunter's not a class that's great at taking forever to pull off. Yeah. Late game burst combo. <laughs> they, they usually die. So I, I, I want it to work. I'm going to try, but doubt they, it. probably not. They had to like post it, note a King crush onto another minion to get us to play King crush in Hunter. Mm. So that's, <laughs> yeah. If you need an indicator of, of how fast Hunter likes to move. Yeah. So Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's a 3-4 for 3 that the beast tag is the only reason I would say, yeah, I think I like it a little more than Obelisk. Like, it's not a hor- it's not a poorly statted mm, yeah, it's beast. Not, yeah. But, um, yeah, that, that's about it. That's the only real thing I'm going to say in Dread Raven's defense from a logical standpoint. I think it's a cool card, though. Uh, Cobalt Sticky Finger is next. A 5-mana 4-4 four, four epic neutral pirate with battle cry that reads, Steal your opponent's weapon. New kind of weapon destruction <laughs> yeah this one's cool um this i would say inspired um I'd like yeah this. it's good against things that you like king's bane that you don't want it to mm. die it has death rattle you i presume the death rattle does not activate when you steal it i don't think you like break it and then re-equip it i think it you know it just comes over basically 
Uh, well, yeah, so. it, it sticks to your fingers, right? <laughs> so you just exactly, you get yeah. the whole thing. Yeah, yes, good context <laughs> clues. Yeah, <laughs> but <laughs> that said, outside of like that specific scenario with King's Bane and Wild or something, I, I just think Harrison's better if you're mm-hmm. if you're trying to play a five mana version of this, or if you care more about mana, then Acidic Swamp Ooze is still better. Rarely, I think, will a deck that cares about like weapon damage be running this over a weapon <laughs> or, you know, yeah like over their choice their of own, weapon exactly, yeah doing their own thing maybe if they have pirate synergies it somehow finds a home but uh it seems like a worse weapon tech than the other alternatives mm-hmm. yeah. i'll have to see even like right now there aren't that 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 many weapons even going around so uh, other than you know wild kingsbane shenanigans but i don't know if they're like galakrond upgraded does give a weapon to all the evil classes so if those decks end up being prevalent like maybe and i guess um zephry's giving Tyrion too like that is a thing that happens quite often so maybe but i don't know if there's enough weapons to even justify any weapons tech right now so and then even if you want to make that choice i agree i think the other two are just better so yep. yeah, and, uh, but this is cool <laughs> yeah yeah it's a cool card but yeah, again, mm-hmm. Ooze Harrison probably going that route. I, I think like how angry am I at Kingsbane and Wild is basically the uh, yeah <laughs> the the case scenario where I'm looking at uh, this Cobalt here. So, so I just don't want to say Sticky Finger. I don't like it. I don't like saying that word. <laughs> uh, Tentacled Menace is next. It's a five mana six five epic neutral minion with a battle cry that reads: Each player draws a card. Swap their costs. This is at least super interesting. I don't (laughs) think it's going to be good, but it's nutty. It's weird. It's cool. (laughs) Someone's going to play this against me and something terrible is going to happen in that exchange. And I'm going to be very salty. Right. It's going to be me for the record. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Potential viability, like crazy big decks are in a lot of late game stuff, but uh, those aren't that good generally. And there still can backfire sometimes. And you, you often still want to run low cost spells in those decks. And this is not like specifically minions or anything. So I feel like it's just going to be awkward. It feels more meme than (laughs) than dream. Yeah. I kind of think that maybe if it was slightly cheaper, this might have a place in like big late game decks that run a lot of heavy stuff. And then if it's a super aggro meta, then they could swap cards and, you know, prevent them from doing something maybe, or, you know, get some removal of yours or something earlier than you should. And like, that could be a potential use case, but that's if this card was cheaper. I think by the time you get to turn five, if this is what you're doing to try to prevent an aggro deck from beating you, you're probably just going to die. Right. (laughs) Right. Yeah. Like you probably already stabilized. You probably have plenty of other ways to, to mess with them. You've either stabilized and you have the time to play a six mana or sorry, five mana, six, five, or you're dead. Yeah. <laughs> so either way, you don't really need to play this card. <laughs> Listen, when we're not doing card reviews, we have a, sec- a segment on the show called crazy game stories. I'm not saying I don't want your tentacle menace, cr- crazy <laughs> game stories in the same way. Like I loved seeing your gnome for crazy game stories, but mm. boy, if you win a game with this, that that's, that's cool. I don't think you're going to win a lot of games with this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, so yeah let's uh move speaking on speaking of memes <laughs> yeah the speaking of memes and wow npcs transmogrifier is up next a two mana two three epic neutral minion that reads after you draw a card transform it into a random legendary minion terrible <laughs> um, it does not have the banner smosh fixes of random yeah legendaries. <laughs> <laughs> so pretty terrible. I will say I wish based on transmogrifiers and wow and the artwork of this card that it would transform into a weapon instead of mm. a legendary minion. Cause first off that would be way more consistent. Like you weapons are generally pretty good and would give you like a specific way to do it. It might be too good in like wild with um, Druid and, and uh, twig of the world tree, that sort of stuff. So that's probably why it's not like that. But I think that would be a more thematic fit and just a better card. Maybe not as fun, perhaps, but just <laughs> it would, it, the artwork just screams that to me, too. It's yeah. really cool art, by the way. Really, if you can't see it, if you're listening, you go check it out. It, it is very well done art. I would have preferred a scene where Ragnaros was waiting in line to get transmogrified. <laughs> That's what I would have uh, Yeah, so chat room's asking if you can transform bombs and bloods. You can, because they're, they're cards you draw, so... They would, but I don't think that. Well, there's a little debate on that because it reads oh, is there? after after you draw a card, not when you draw oh, a okay. card. So it, I think it has well, that's to right, the bombs get into your, make your hand. hand. 
Yeah. Oh, so yeah, that's true. Hand. So, so mm. I don't know for sure. I, I I don't have an answer for that. Just I know there's debate. I'm not sure yeah. it matters. I don't think you're playing this in either, either way. <laughs> yeah, I don't. Even if it did, yeah. <laughs> How much of a percentage of the population would have to be playing a bomb deck or a, or a blood deck to make me <laughs> want to include this in my <laughs> and no. a transmogrifier? No. That's <laughs> never gonna happen. <laughs> we have two way cooler cards to talk about, and then then we will we will be done with talking cards for the day. So let's get to a dragon Plus queen. There's a- Sorry, I was going to say if if bombs and bloods is what you're trying to target, we're not talking about it. It'll be on our Monday show, but you guys should look at Wormrest Purifier because it basically does that. It's just straight up better because it will yeah. specifically target those cards in your deck. So that's your tech if you're if you're going for bloods. Good point. Good point. Yeah. Yes. So you don't need transmogrifier. Yep. Uh, Alex Straza is back again. This time, Dragon Queen Alex Straza, nine mana, eight eight with a battle or sorry, legendary neutral dragon. Getting sloppy here at the end. Battle cry. <laughs> if your deck has no duplicates, add two random dragons to your hand. They cost zero. Good God. Um, I mean, even have- if you low roll like and get like a fairy dragon, it's still like three, two times two extra stats for free on top of your eight, eight dragon. Like I I think this is really good. <laughs> I had to read this card multiple times to realize that there was not a also if you're holding a dragon to trigger this kind of thing. I'm like, oh, <laughs> this is just a good card. This is uh, this is just a thing that this... Highlander decks get to do now. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, yeah, I, I think I'm, I have the same sentiment. I, I, I mean, theoretically, it's bad if you're really far behind. But even then, there's dragons that have taunt and battle cry removal and so it might bail you out of those scenarios, even if you mm-hmm. get lucky. So uh, the worst case scenarios for this card seem pretty good. And the best case scenarios seem absolutely insane. And and that's an equation for a, a really good card as far as I'm concerned. Mm-hmm. Yep. All right. Frizz, Kindle Roost. We've been alluding to it over the course of the episode when we're talking about reducing the cost of our dragons by two. Uh, Frizz is a four mana, five, four legendary neutral minion with a battle cry that reads, reduce the cost of dragons in your deck by two. So, Kelly so with dragons. dragons. <laughs> yeah, but this is kind of Kelly right? Because it's like, if you can get it and play it early on, it's awesome. Then you're going to start getting your like Alex Straza for seven. And you know, like you're going to start to do crazy stuff earlier in the game, but the longer it goes, the worse it gets. Right. Cause you, you know, you get this late game, you've already drawn all your dragons cause it doesn't impact your hand. It's only your deck. Right. So you want to get this as soon as possible and it just gets worse and worse and worse as you draw. So I, uh, I will Yay, say, though, but <laughs> that, that's a very important consideration to make. But here's the thing about that that's cool. It's not going to be in your hand if that's the scenario. So you're not being punished for running the bad card. Unlike um, Keliseth, you got punished because you sacrificed kind of your deck construction. You, you mm. couldn't run two drops. So it was like, I'm making a sacrifice to get this Keliseth bonus. If I don't draw the Keliseth, I still reap the downside of Keliseth, but I don't reap the right. upside. With this card... You don't really have any downside. I mean, I guess running dragons is kind of similar, but presumably you're going to like the dragons anyway and have a very powerful dragon deck regardless. So you're not really reaping the downside along the way. So even if you drew it last, it's like, okay, well, I got a bad card last, but it was last, right? Like the Mm -hmm. game was already happening. If your deck is reliant on the two-mana discount, like if you're setting up some kind of combo or something, of course, yes, yeah, throwing it late would be a, would be a major issue. But if it's just you know a mid rangey deck or just a lot of dragon stats or whatever it is, you know Highlander control deck, I, I think it's probably fine if you draw it late. You're super excited when you draw it early because you just win the game, and if you don't, you still have a pretty good chance. And that's <laughs> like what that. makes you just win look. the game. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and like yeah, I said earlier, sometimes stealing games in Hearthstone is just good enough for a card. Yeah, it just steals one <laughs> out of ten. Like, okay, that's ten percent win rate from that card. Like, that's insane. So, I, I I think it's that that aspect of the downside is perhaps being overstated a little bit. So for me, I, I think this is a pretty solid card, and maybe even really really good. Yeah, I, I think so as well. Um, I, I, I don't. When I say Kelsey, I don't necessarily think of it as a bad thing. Although uh, we took a lot of issue at the time with kind of the, the concept of the card design around Kelseth of having so much of an upside tied to a one of card, where if it is drawn early, it so drastically changes the way the game plays out. And I do still harbor some of those feelings here, but it, yeah, I don't. I, I don't because of the reasons you mentioned. Because I'm not 
you know, kind of sacking the quality of my deck really for, for including this. Um, and also just, well, that's kind of the thing. It's a, it's a deck building challenge, right? So do you go all like eight, nine, 10 mana dragons hoping to get them two turns earlier than that? Or do you kind of like have a fairly decent curve that if you do get a discount and get to do it two turns earlier for the rest of your curve and that just wins you the game, like it, it's a nice upside as opposed to the way the deck has to play. So I think it comes down to what dragons you include and how you actually build a deck like I think she goes in most dragon decks, but could maybe be super impactful in others. I don't know. I think is there any way to tutor this card out? I don't think so, right? There's no, no, because like, she doesn't have a no. She doesn't have any kind of tag on her. No. Yeah, and I don't right. think there's like tutor for four cost, five attack, or four health mm. minions. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't uh, think so either. Yeah. So no, I, I think we're I think we're good in that regards. But yeah, I think I think this is an auto include in dragon decks. It's a, it's a really good like garnish if you think about it that way. Like I said, I think you're I think you'd be disappointed. Right. Like like we just said, I think you'd be disappointed if you're like doing this specifically for a combo. But mm-hmm. if if you I mean just, if it was a two two, right? Like you'd be like, Oh god, I, I don't know. Like I have to think yeah. about this. But the fact that it's a five four, you're like, Well, okay, sure. Yeah. It's not <laughs> awful, yeah. Let's play it. I can I can handle this very mm-hmm. slight decrease to my power on turn four for an insane upside for the next twenty turns. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the rest of the sure. Yeah. However many turns are left in this game. Yeah, absolutely. So very cool. Well, uh, with that, we're done with cards for the day. This is uh, we did it. longest episode in a while. Uh, <laughs> Thanks Regis. for sticking it out, Regis. No, it's, about cards. Oh. it's all right. We uh, I had a feeling we'd probably go a little bit long today. That's why I, uh, that's why I, I gave you some warnings. <laughs> it's like, you don't have to stay the whole show if you don't want to, but um, we're really glad you did, man. This is a, this is a fun episode. Um, so before we go, uh, thanks again to our patrons supporting us over at patreon.com slash TAC. Go check it out if you like the show and you would like to support what we're doing here at The Angry Chicken. Uh, also, thanks to our producers, Declan H., Sean C., and Cheesy Bob. Thank you very much for the support. Uh, other than that, around the table, before we go, Regis, as our guest who... I would have to historically check, but I'm pretty sure you've stuck around longer than any other guest in the history of the show. Uh, <laughs> clock, clocking in about two uh, and a half hours. I'm, Thank you so I'm much. Dedicated, um, if nothing else. Yeah, man. Where can everyone? Uh, I have fo- one thing going for me. <laughs> <laughs> disagree. Stubborn. I, I disagree. But where can uh, where can folks find all the wonderful content you're uh, you're putting out? Yeah, so pretty much anywhere, just Regis Kelvin. Uh, just Google Regis Hearthstone, and it'll all pop up. You'll see my my big big mug somewhere <laughs> on there, and uh, you'll know it's me. It's nothing too hard. We hang out on stream and YouTube mostly on Twitch, and yeah, just have fun playing Hearthstone. Pretty chill. I don't try too hard usually, although in Battlegrounds I have been a little bit often pretty high leaderboard in Battlegrounds. But still, very friendly community. Everybody's super nice. I attract good people, so... It's just a blessing to, to get to hang out with them every day, and you can come join us anytime. Aw, I think you just called us good people. <laughs> uh, In a roundabout way, uh, maybe. So. Yeah. <laughs> that was a mistake. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I made a bad implication there. <laughs> <laughs> Jocelyn, what about you? Uh, you can find me on Twitter and Twitch. I'm at Joss Plays. That's J O C E Plays. Uh, do you go follow the Twitch channel. Did do an extra live stream this weekend. It went really, really well. We hit the goal and then some, and we still have two streams left for the for the charity for this year. So uh, do go follow the Twitch channel, share the link, uh, share the everything, and because the more eyes we get on it, the better. Um, it's for the Children's Miracle Network of Hospitals. So very, very good cause. And yeah, it was a very good stream this weekend. So thank you all for, uh, for coming and hanging out. It was a lot of fun. My wife is a nurse at a children's hospital, so. Oh, really? Great. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's awesome. Yeah, I, it's uh, I think the the eighth year in a row now that I that I've done this charity, and uh, yeah, it's it's just it makes me feel good about gaming. It's it's part of extra life, so I'm sure if she works wow, at a children's yeah. hospital, she's probably heard of it. But yeah, yeah, yeah. This year we decided to do uh, like multiple streams over multiple weeks instead of uh, the big huge long marathon because the charity is actually open for you know the majority of the year. So we're like, why not take advantage and raise more money? So that's the plan, and we're doing Super. pretty good. Yep. Sweet. Everyone should go support that. It's a great cause. Uh, if you're trying to find me, everything is at amove.tv. That's amove.tv. Tons of podcasts over there. I will choose to single out Let's Talk About Star Wars 
uh, because we're doing it weekly finally because the Mandalorian is going. And I don't know if you could tell, but it's a cultural phenomenon. So you can go subscribe to that and listen to me absolutely lose my collective shit about uh, Star Wars' uh, first live-action show. They're those bad Ewoks movies. We won't count those. That's going to wrap it up for this episode of The Anger Chicken. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you to Regis again for joining us. And until Monday, we're recording the next episode on Monday next week. Job's done. Job's done. Job's done. Ooh. I pictured that as the creepy tree. (laughs) 